And we're live. And I'm I'm trying to get unpissed because I worked all day. Corey already heard it. I worked all day to get this working. And at the last second, before these guys show up, before Corey shows up at least, it breaks. And I can't do the picture in picture that I wanted to do. I wanted it to look like we were watching a little TV in the middle of the screen. Yeah. So now I just have to go from this and switch so with that little tiny the button. The TV would be... Here yeah, somewhere. I had it. I actually had a PNG outline of a television, so it looked like we we're looking at the TV. What's up, guys? John's here. We're waiting for Al, but I thought we would start just because we told everybody ten o'clock. Welcome, shows. Benjamin Kovac. Kovac. John Zilke. Corey, are you screaming? Zero. I'm not okay. screaming. Okay. You guys, let let us know if one of our voices is too loud because I know sometimes it can get. Crazy. Should we go with? Oh, that's a hot mic. It's a hot mic. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Check, check, one, two. Okay, so you guys, <laughs> what we're going to do, we can actually read your comments, but we're going to be watching an entire concert. Uh-oh, Uncle Nate is on here. What's up, Nate? You know what, Corey? He was trying to come with. He's like, I was at that show. I, I can add a, a perspective. If you looked at my phone, <laughs> you'd see that I wrote out an entire thing to Nate. I said, Nate, we're doing a thing, uh, 30th anniversary. Chris can't make it. You want to come down? At the last minute, I thought I should ask you guys before I invite somebody. Unlike what Corey would I do. I told him no. And all of a sudden, I'm like Mike is very anal about these videos. He doesn't I'm want sorry, any surprise I'm guests. Sorry, man. <laughs> I I would have had you next time because I thought it would be cool to have somebody just you know. Hey, who the hell is this dude? Jonathan Davis. Are you wearing an Adidas jacket? <laughs> all right, you can sit there, Al. Al is fashionably late and fashionable. <laughs> <clears throat> he was getting his Easter groove on. That's right. All right. So, Al, I was just telling Were you. Were you at home making deviled eggs? <clears throat> <clears throat> deviled no. eggs with the ladies. Mm, oh, my God. What's no. that? No deviled eggs. See, I have to what hit is this stupid button to switch to the screen. So, do you get together with your family on Easter? Yes. What? It, what's the you Douglas would. family uh, special food item that your mom makes that everybody I think wants? Your voice is l- way louder. Smorgasbord <laughs> of good stuff. But is it like a ham dinner with like all all gratin potatoes? Yes. And um, dessert. Got to have deviled eggs, though. It's Easter. Deviled eggs. That doesn't make sense. She's got to have an Easter egg hunt for all the grandkids, Mm. I'm guessing. Scott Mm. just said it got a whole lot prettier since Elle showed up. What's up, Bridget? (laughs) Bridget's here. I think she's at this concert, right? What? The 30th anniversary concert? I don't know. Al, can you scoot over a little bit towards this me, way? just a hair, so you're in the middle? That way? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. the, just just the superimposed TV box is gone. Yeah, there was supposed to be this old school like, TV with the show in the middle. Like, like but this? The last second, yeah. The can last I, second it broke. Make twist. This is going to weird me out if I can't see my yeah, own face. Uh, my... How much? That's good. Okay. Singers always do that. They yeah. don't. They never loosen anything. They just go. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the singers for some reason. How expensive is this? No. <laughs> this is expensive. This isn't so much. How does this thing work? <laughs> okay, you guys. It's kind of like when Scott does his interviews and he talks off the mic. I'm like, dude, you're this. You're yeah. a singer. What are you doing? Hello. Okay, so you guys. Hold on a second. I gotta take this. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello. He's one of those What's people. Up? What's up, pepperoni? Yes. Je- Jeremy Steffen's here. Yeah, the meat's getting rotten. Just don't forget to lock up. No, Jeremy, this is what we need these days because we're always looking down at our phones. So this is like a a yoga pose for all of us looking up a little bit. That was my staff. They want to know if they can have beers. I told them, go ahead. Do you feel like a dictator? Mm, You can only have two. Did you say you'd be the sober cab? (laughs) You're going to pick them up afterwards. They all live in Coon Rapids. They can drive home. Riff says congrats on your new restaurant location. Thank you. Thanks for the invite, Corey. Jeez. I haven't been there. It's a free country. Show up when you want. I drove by, but it was during the day, and I thought you guys were still setting up. So I did a open at 11. I did a VIP donation, so I get to be (gasps) part of Swap's cool party. I think Um, I did a dig too. What are you talking about? I did a whole freaking giveaway. Well, that's separate. No, it's not. That that was a lot of work. (laughs) He said it'll be like in May. I want want my picture on the wall with my signature on it and Nancy Wilson's shoe next to it. Mm hmm. What do you think? That works. I um I'm referencing Mike's. I just uh, watched your fix the what's it called now? Fix the, this band. Fix this mm-hmm. band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the guys were wearing their own band shirt, and mm-hmm. you said you like it how the band wore, wore their own shirt. Mm-hmm. So I wore our own shirt. 
I was hoping one of us would <laughs> also wear it. So it was like <laughs> that picture we have where Al and I are both wearing it. Yeah. Chris is wearing Zildjian. Corey's wearing like Cannibal Corpse. I like how I made all these shirts and then Al just gave his away willy nilly. You did? No. Here, Scott, just yeah. take it. Oh, shit. Like, I Al, that shirt's mine. for you, you dink. Corey, I still have mine. Just so you know. <laughs> Don't be mad at all of us. Have a Sanctus concert in Corey's restaurant. We can. I have a stage and a full PA. I think that would get rid of people, actually. They're trying to eat barbecue, and all of a sudden they hear <laughs> swords of sadness. You don't want that. All the right. S- the swords of sauce. You guys, <laughs> I have my own club now. I own my own stage and PA. You can have Heartless play? I can have whoever I want play. Nice. I'm going to eat a big old pork chop right on stage. No, that would... Could you imagine the Belches on stage with a metal band? That would be disgusting. No, it's Christopher that's going to have to deal with the back, back <laughs> wind flow. I genuinely think your Sancta shirt is one of my favorite shirts I own. That's good. I like it when a shirt fits well. It sucks when it rides up in your boobs and stuff, you know, that feeling. <laughs> it's a bad feeling. Okay, you guys, we're going to play the show. If Corey puts his freaking phone down, geez. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. I'm a popular guy now, you guys. I'm a big deal in Coon Rapids. I'm Coon Cor- Rapids famous now. Corey could have moved to Texas and been a small fish in a big pond, but he decided to stay here. That's right. It's like living in Northern Exposure as a doctor. You know, you're a big deal. <laughs> All I right. Didn't, I didn't Spears, know you had a pond. Danny, what's up? I have a what? He has a pond with fishes? Oh, yeah. He does. It's a koi pond, and he fell into it one time. What? <laughs> Nothing. Al takes everything to the left <laughs> and then to the right. All right, so we're going to play the show. And, Corey, even though this comment box is over your sweet, sweet bod, oh. people can not see it. So it's just us seeing that. Oh, good. Okay. okay. People are actually seeing Corey's sweet, sweet bod. Hey. All right, you guys ready? I'm kind of nervous. I, I went through the concert once real quick, but I don't know if somebody said something. If Tony says something, it's all going to be exposed mm. today. So... Hopefully nothing drops. Um, how do I play the freaking thing again? Is it like Enter Sandman when he was like, whoa, you guys really messed that part yeah. up. <laughs> no, he literally said, whoa, fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> he was our biggest fan, but he was also very honest. So we kind of needed that. You, know? you do need that brutal honesty, I yeah. think. Um, I hate it when people are too, I, I mean, I like it. They're trying to be nice, but you don't get better if you don't ever hear what the problems. That's you true. I mean? If everybody so. tells you what you want to hear, you're not doing it right. Definitely. Corey's pond is the clay hole. <laughs> so it's me. The clay hole. Yes. <laughs> Nate, you could have been here, but you, it would have been awkward. You would have been like right up front and center. We would have been looking at the back of your head. Sitting the on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys ready? We're going to start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And like I said, everything broke two minutes before Corey got here. So I have to flip between the, sh- the show and then just us back and forth. So you're never going to see both at the same time, which actually might be okay. Ooh. But you can still hear us, I think. You guys ready? They'll lot, have to let us know. A lot of memories here. Let's go action. The banner. Al, you have the banner still, right? <laughs> uh, different one. Dean has a those sweet flow. Nice glasses, me. That's why I never got laid. I had wow. girl repellent on my face. I haven't seen this footage in forever. I know. That's why this is going to be exciting. I told the Mirage group about this video, uh, this live stream tonight because it's going to show the whole Mirage. Did somebody have a boom box on the ca- on the table? Probably. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had a USA Dude, jacket back Larry's then. Larry's jacket is the best. And Loshi. Everyone had a crush on my sister. It was Dude, weird. Where's Jeff Goldman? I don't know. Hopefully he's not watching. Right I, I now. thought that was her boyfriend at that time. Yeah, I don't know who that dude was. Uh oh. Tom Croxton, I think. I was using the crate head. Yep. Look at Dean working hard. <laughs> I know. Just to have Chris Blood smash the snare in front of his ear. There you are, Mike. Here's the PV. Here's your PA amp, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great that we have the riser, though. I know. We're very fortunate. Al's dad is like. 35 years old. <laughs> We're older now than your dad was then. That's I think so. <laughs> hey, speaking of dads. Hey! Kenny. Wow. Oh, my God. Duncan Trussell. <laughs> There's my dad. And who's that lady? Uh, his, his daughter? 
Cindy? Yep, Cindy. Mullet party. I Dude, Kenny's hair was so long. There's my mom. mom. Oh my god. There's my mom. If this is 94. Your dad was hitting on my mom, by the way, Corey. My mom and dad were 40. That's crazy. Because my dad was born in 50. But my dad was like 41. Do you guys remember how nervous we were right here? Just like seeing a big crowd and not knowing what to expect. I know I had to go to the bathroom a thousand times before. It was the tight pants, I think. <laughs> Look at that light rack. Mike, are you going to release the Sanctus Done With Reliance demo on streaming anytime soon? I don't know. Look at that. I guess you didn't know. I didn't know you had all the footage of the sound check. <laughs> yeah, I cut some of it out, though. For Otherwise, this would be like an hour and a half, you know. We didn't even use the intro. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Dude, where's the mar the Imperial March? Exactly. Are we going to start with Freedom's Chains is my guess. You'll see. <laughs> I put the titles on the screen. Nice. So you pre-edited this. No, cool. I, just barely. I spent like an hour total doing it. That's cool. Yes, Chris Alexander, I think we were middling. We always had the best spot, which was the middle slot. Yeah, this is second to headliner. The sound is pretty good for a camcorder picking oh, this dude. up. It's a Sony. Oh, yeah. Sorry if I misspelled anything. I was in a freaking hurry. I like the font, though. Yeah, the spray paint font. The stencil <laughs> font. I miss that guitar so much, that Yamaha. There's that bossy yes. cue pedal sound. It did stick out. A little too much. Not really. I don't think so. I think it just built it up. No, that was its, it's whole purpose was to stick. It could swap up there in the riser. Yep. I do not recognize this. Do you guys? <laughs> it no. sounds like the middle of Fail to Beat. What is this riff? No vocals. Ramsey forgot to turn the vocals on. Wow, yeah. Wait till Chorus is damaged, then the vocals kick in for some weird reason. I wonder if they were in our monitor, though. <laughs> Corey, you sound like the guy from Propane. <laughs> This is cool. It's it's cool because I don't recognize the song during the verses. This whole part. I don't know what this riff if, is. If you told me to play this today, I had no idea. It would be this. like that Temptation of Sin thing we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Alexander, Alice in the middle. I am on the right side. Corey's on the left. Chris is back in the kit. This was a new riff. We, we changed it. Yep. I don't even know the words. I know, it's weird. Corey, that's your weird red and gold bass, right? It's an Epiphone and it sucked ass. <laughs> it I bought good. it because the chick from White Zombie played one. Oh, and I like the reverse headstock. That's pretty cool. I can hear the bass really good, though. I mean, it sounds good. Yeah, Ramsey's dialing it in as much as he can. We should have done the intro, though. I think this we were running out of time. We did a corn, yeah, cord, corn cord. This is also like, I don't know if you consider us adults at this point, but this I, is probably the most thinnest and best shape I was ever <laughs> in of my life. I was 18 here, I think. Yeah. I think I was still riding my 10-speed bike over to Al's house every weekend. We should just all ride bikes from now. There's Mike Skolnick, wannabe. So this is my junior year. Would have been your guys' senior year of high school. Yep. Wait till the end of the video. This Asian guy goes up to Tony. <laughs> You'll see. Yeah. I just hope the video stays in sync because I didn't check that. It might go out of sync. The way the camera's moving, it makes it look like an insane stadium show or something, but it's not. It's pretty big. Well, doesn't he come up onto the stage later? <laughs> yeah. Chris Alexander, are you still in contact with the drummer? Yeah, he's in Florida right now. <laughs> if you watch any of our other 
podcast. He's always here. Thanks, John Zilke. I flew in my executive jet to Minneapolis today. Yes. yes. I love how they split the bar area with the kids on the <laughs> left side, so I have, I have the lame side. <laughs> wow. I probably can't even hit that note singing. Uh, it's so high. I'm wearing those white high tops now. I, I brought kind of a little oh, different. Nice. Yowza. Okay, before we go to this one, which did, is one of my favorites. Did we not get a crowd reaction? It just jumps right into from day to day. Well, I, I chopped out some of the middle because we sucked in between songs. We took like five minutes, I swear. It was like we'd say a joke that nobody would understand because it's an inside <laughs> joke. And then like Corey ran to the bathroom or something. I don't know. And Nelson, we started and the crowd was like dead again. It's like we could have kept it rolling, you know. Oh, but. That's... And what really sucks is at the end, we had to cut a song, I think, because Tony's, or your dad comes up and goes, 10 minutes. And we're like, what? <laughs> we have three songs left. Okay, so real quick, isn't that weird to hear a song you have no clue how to play anymore? It's like yeah. it's like a, somebody else played it. I, I have no idea what we were doing. That's not the real Freedom's Change. No. That was like, the, we tried to jazz 2. it up. 0. Yeah, like, oh, that's You know what else we lame. did that to? Fail to Be. Remember, yeah, we were just yeah. caking right away. Did it, did it, did it. Okay, everybody. So that was fun. Mike, who made Freedom's Chains? I think there was a intro first, right? Da, 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 ga, ga, and then we turned it into a song eventually yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. We had enough material to... <laughs> Looks like a video off the Yeah. It's funny you say that because Al and I were like... Corey, too, I think, used to just watch Cliff them all endlessly <laughs> yeah. on VHS yeah. until it wore out, you know. <laughs> Parker, I love hearing these Sanctus songs. Never heard them before. Oh, you're going to hear a couple more. Yeah. I want these guys to uh, hear three songs in what we play. You're not going to believe it. Okay. You guys ready for, I think this is one of my favorite Sanctus tunes. Not to pat myself in the back, but Al wrote it. Here we go. Oh, the wireless. We're playing it very fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a little pit going on. Okay, check out what, how Corey plays this. A little mosh pitting. <laughs> you didn't even An wait. An octave higher. Your mom, are, your mom, looks mom at the tender age of 39 years no. old. She's looking kind of nervous <laughs> like, is Nate in the pit? People are smoking on the bar side of it. <laughs> There's Sarah and Sam up front. Oh, you're going to see them a lot later. I get that one girl from uh, Strap right there. That's all I cared about. <laughs> yeah. Huge crush. Didn't we get yelled at if we walked on the monitors? I don't know. I don't remember that. Remember the time Corey and I actually went up on the PA speakers? Isn't that Dave Yeager down there? Who's that Probably, guy with the hat you know what's the weird? Everybody was at this show. Somehow all the stars aligned. My dad looks like he's in Miami Vice. <laughs> I think this was the show that was like, I had like three ex-girlfriends out there all at the same time. Yikes. And I was still trying to get a girlfriend. I think even Chris's girlfriend made this show. Remember Chris had that thermos next to him? I forgot about that. I don't think I even played the fill. I just... Well, Chris... <laughs> The first time you did it in an octave high, so you could hear it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Look, I still put all my shit on my amp like that. Three, three, con three condoms never used. <laughs> <laughs> all I had was a glass of water on Christopher's riser oh, right behind. Oh, the good me. old days before our drinking. Yes. Only water. I have my Sanctus pass. I still have that at home. Who's that girl on the left drinking? Okay. Trivia question, who's that long-haired guy back there to the left? He was in a band or something. Would, uh, would Rachel Scott have been at this show? I don't know. I was looking for her. The EQ pedal is all I had. It was nerve-wracking because the guys from Man Unkind were in the front row. At least the one guy was. So it's like... Why are we playing it so fast? Because we're freaking geeked it's out. Like double time. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> well, compared to how we play it now. <laughs> hey, the Ramones. See the blonde guy? Down. The blonde guy from Man and Kind. Jason. Yep. Jesus Christ. This 
I can't even believe how fast it is. It's because we're old now. They couldn't keep the band. <laughs> couldn't keep the band going with the shampoo and conditioner budget. Al solo. Al had the V at this time. Yeah. I'm missing a bunch we, of. We notes. even had people upstairs. You see that? Corey, your mom looks like a future manager of the band, like checking us out. See? She's like, hmm, these guys have some potential. Mike Portnoy. There's Loshi and she's surrounded by dudes. Of course. I love this part. So everyone needs to take notice of my baggy skater pants that I stole from my brother. Yeah. Corey, you know? Corey always jumped on the trends, didn't you? Yeah, I was trying to be cool. One time Corey showed up with dreadlocks and like a, what was it? Like a Scottish bagpipe outfit or something? Or a, a tie. No, it was like a tie with um, the, the dread. The skirt, I, didn't, the kilt. I didn't have a kilt back then. Okay, never No, mind. I did not. No, but when you wore the kilt, you had dreads one time. This no. was like in 96, though, I think. No, I never had a kilt back then. No. I have a picture that of was it. in 2016 oh wait okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do ha i thought i had a picture of it maybe i'm wrong i love the sanctus cover of helpless the one from ryan's oh yeah that's that might be us opening for a uh, nuclear assault when we did that actually i'm not sure but tony gets a really cool uh picture of chris doing the intro with the tom fill and everything it's so sweet all right, so the reason I pause it between songs is so we can freaking take a breather because that's a lot to listen to in headphones. What do you guys think? From Day to Day always was a good song live. Oh, yeah, it was different, you know. It was, like, inspirational in a weird way because of the chorus. I don't know what it is, but... What was heavy with that EQ pedal? Yeah. I just sounded different. That was kind of an accident how that happened. I remember I was just playing and all of a sudden I kept hitting the pedal and it was like, oh, that sounds cool. And then we ch changed it and turned it into a riff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds great. Let's make that a song. <laughs> yes. Okay. So just to prove that I was ugh, I'm so mad, I better not mess around because something will go wrong. <laughs> Sullivan <laughs> wants to know what <laughs> pedals you had, Mike. What were your pedals? Well, back then, all I had for distortion was a turbo distortion pedal. And then I had the EQ pedal for my leads, and that's it. And then everything kind of fell apart when I got, bought the F rack effects unit, the valve effects, which is a Digitech unit. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so cool because I had a rack, and Chris gave me his power amp, and I ran it through a 4x12 Marshall. And it sounded like ass, but I thought, oh, this is so high tech and cool. Mm -hmm. Sadly, my better tone was with a turbo distortion pedal through a PA PV speaker, you know. Al, what were you playing here? The crate? The crate. So what is the model number? I keep looking for that oh, thing. Oh, it was a GX. Okay. S GX 420 or GX 410. Didn't it have like red and blue dials or something? Mm, it was no, like, okay. no, they were white. It was white and black. Um, so I remember there's a crate series with like red, white, and blue like it was colors on it. Two channel, and um, it didn't have chorus built in, I don't believe. Susie's here. No, it didn't have any effects, I don't think. No, it was just reverb, you know. Um, Reed, fail to be may be coming up soon. We will see. The chorus pedal, that's a funny story. Um, I had the Boss CS2, CE2, it's one of those. And it was, like, so cool to play because I loved Early Testament. They use chorus all the time. And later I realized I loaned it to Al, and now it's gone forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luckily, <laughs> I got a free one from my friend. It's the way the world works. Okay. You guys want to take a guess at what the third song is? What The third song should be a killer tune, right? GX-16? Um, Mighty Man. <laughs> Missing time. Okay, let's check it out. I think Al is really close. You guys having fun? We have 126 people watching. That's oh, super cool. Thank you, everyone. No, it was not a blue voodoo. All right, here we go. See <laughs> this shit, Tony Hall. My inhaler. Get all those beers you got, Mike. I wish. <laughs> they were buying them for you, though. <laughs> I would have fallen over after one yeah. beer back then. <laughs> I love Tony's close-ups of all the people. What? Did I ask for more guitar? And uh, Chris did. Let's rock. Thanks for them. 
That's a sweet Creed song, Al. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Going way back for this one. I love how we sidewashed our amps like pros. This is the most Metallica sounding song we did. Yeah, mixed with Queen. Yeah. I remember feeling self conscious because that pretty girl was looking up at me the whole night. I'm like, I hope there's nothing in my nose or something. Al with his white blue pants. Can't explain that. <laughs> Baby blue. Airwalk shoes. Yep. Skater phase. Just like swap. Look at Chris wearing the spandex. I love that he had the Sanctus logo on the kick drum. Did I, Katie. did I tuck my shirt in? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> is that Chris had me this banging his head right there? I think it is. I don't think that is. Oh, wait. You don't think so? Maybe. No. Wait. I think it is. Okay. His hair looked really straight. Corey's like, what's it like over at Mike's side? Oh, it's lame. Let's go back. <laughs> Except for this guy. <laughs> I can't hear my bass. Yeah. yeah. There's no bass in the monitor. Look at how pretty she was. She was like Belinda Carlisle. Too bad I was too chicken to talk to her. I think I was wearing my all black Converse One Stars. Nice. I was wearing my British Knights. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks of how to play this. First and third fret. Well, like that. No. Stop. The chorus was that like, was, yeah, cool. that's different. Deep. I think that was a mistake. Al, I put my foot on the monitor, so whatever the rule was, I didn't follow it. There's Michaela and her boyfriend. Sebastian Bach was her boyfriend? Who I hated. <coughs> I hated him. <coughs> I saw Matt back there. Didn't you go to prom with them, Al? Michaela? What was her yes. boyfriend's name? Peter. 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 Yeah, we uh, did a limo. Michaela looked like Matt Dillon. She had hair just like mine. <laughs> Susie, it's the Mirage. I should have yes, said something. And I was I loved her. What does that say if I was secretly loved Al's hair or yep. was probably. You always wanted to just stick your nose in it. Right. <laughs> you guys, we should have told you this is the Mirage in Minneapolis before it became um, a bakery again. I think Corey and I were pretty cool because we put our wirelesses on our straps, I think. I need to ask my brother. He's watching this. Nate, what am I wearing for shoes? He'll know. I think those are my... I think those my are Pumas. I think, are the, I think they're my, my Native Americans, they were called. Al, I like how you did the solo first, and then I come in for the faster solo. Yeah. We were totally trying to be metallic. I know. Look at all these familiar faces. Where's Scott? Wow, that's shredding slowly, though. This is before I was... I was too young to know I had, like, limitations with speed. This is like the whole Coon Rapids crowd is on that one side. Well, it was... It was all Chris during buddies. spring break, right? That's why it's so yeah. populated. That hi-hat just cuts through everything. Yeah, Chris had great gear. His snare is like 12 inches deep. Look at that thing. Heck yeah. It's like a marching snare. All brass, right? Yeah. He just bought a Black Beauty. Nice, Al. Some improv select that. Pepperoni, that's like an average kill em all solo. How dare you? <laughs> no, you're right. I, I don't remember doing that stop. I love this part, though, when it kicks in. Kick drum sounds sweet. And we're not even in front of the speakers for the PA. Oh, he's doing double bass. Oh, yeah. That rocks. So come back. Chris used to rock. Wow. How many yes did Al do? Wow. Now? Man, okay. lung capacity. Hey Mike, I think Ooh. my dad is in this crowd. I think he just got body drunk. surfed. Oh, Metallica ending. Ja, 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 ja. 
<laughs> you know what? Actually, kind of sweet. I love though. that. Ending. You know what we're missing is the fog machine. How can we never use a freaking fog machine? I don't know. But that. I'm gonna watch that again. I'm not. Who's running lights on this? Because it looks lame. Uh, Rick. <laughs> Rest in peace, Rick. Uh, no, it's just you can't see the show from this angle. Is if you Rick go to the not front, with us anymore? <laughs> the the mechanics. <laughs> is Rick dead? Parker, he uh, just said. Oh, Parker's right, wondering right. if Tony Tony's on in the crowd. Uh, no, I don't. No, I, don't I don't think, think Tony so. was like a huge Sanctus fan at this point. No, talking no, no. about Fitty, uh, Rick Fitzgerald. Right. Yeah, but I was just talking about Tony. Um, Fitty's I don't think fame? I don't think Rick is around anymore. I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. He was almost our our second drummer. Hey, Mike, I want to know how well I'm doing. So pose on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Just tag me in it. How come I never used a vacuum machine? Shampoo budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we couldn't wash out the smoke the next day when we did do that. So laser light show would have been nice. We were just happy to have the cans we had, you know. Like the Mirage had an amazing light show, and we were just blown away. The first time we went and saw the Regime, remember that? They would start with the whole rack down. Then the band would start, the lights would kick in, kick in and they would raise the lights like this. It was so crazy. They were really hot, though. Oh, I, you guys can't see. I mean, Sorry. on stage, that was, you sweat like a... Oh, yeah. There was a lot of sweat going Next on. Next song. Let's do it. Oh, okay. You guys going to release the live show footage after the stream? So we're not talking over it, probably. Uh, I think a lot of it's going to go on the documentary that we're never going to make, but uh, we'll <laughs> see what happens. Okay, what do you guys think we play next? Incomplete. That's always kind of mid-set, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's definitely not mid. Oh, how long did we play for? Um, I think a good 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, 45, I think. But that's like the perfect set. Since we <laughs> talk so much between songs, we only got to play like eight <laughs> songs. I'm serious. That's why we but played we're playing so them fast. so fast, though. <laughs> yeah. You think we'd have extra songs in 45 minutes? No, we. Um, I don't know exactly how long our set was, but I we're know turning these four-minute songs into three-minute tunes. Yeah, <laughs> and we took out our freaking intro, which would have been epic at this show. I can't believe we didn't do our intro. Oh, it's so weird. All right, you guys, the Star Wars one. Yeah. Yeah. Or the fuck one. Fuck one. Are you guys ready? The next yes. tune. What's it gonna be? <laughs> oh yeah, Tony goes across okay. the stage. Alan, what are you doing after the show? <laughs> Every girl. <laughs> Tony goes into the green room to get a beach. Twelve <laughs> naked women in the back room. And it was twenty dollars for actor so if anybody can find that. Sorry, Alec cut you off. Oh, Al. <laughs> it's what's her face? The blonde Katie. Uh, Katie. Let's play it. Fail! Two beats! What version? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was hoping it was the other version where we could just kick into the riff part. I gotta get, play my sweet bass lick. It's true. You had a hard key back then. Chris hitting the two floor toms. That's badass. He's having a good time. Did I flick him off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a sign of love back then. I think I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt, you guys. I think so. Oh, shit. What? That's Tony's edit. I didn't do that. That looks shitty. Like, I just cut it to my solo. <laughs> I didn't. Trust me, I didn't. Vocals sound good on this song. Though. Yeah, you get some delay. Now that, you're, now that Tony's in front of the PA speakers, you can hear everything. Look at the lights, way better. I like how it sounds up close. Oh, remember we Here's the stopped? edit. Yeah. This Corey's ad libbing backups. <laughs> oh, this part rules. You guys know why I wore long sleeve shirts back then? Nate said Chris had two hi hats at this time. No, Chris has never had two hi hats. 
I think he had the remote one, didn't he? With the the weird co like cable going to it. He may have had it, but I don't remember him ever using it at a gig. Like, could you imagine him hooking that up at a gig? <laughs> Mike tossing the candy bars. Yep. Just Did you ever lose a pick doing the finger tapping? Um, no, and I never lost my virginity either. <laughs> Until way later. <laughs> I think it was the glasses and the pants. No, I wore long sleeves because of my eczema. Just change your diet. That'll all go away. I did. I was like, oh, if I don't drink 12 cans of Coke every night. Well, it's it's the glyphosate and all the wheat. Which shirt am I wearing? Yeah, it did help to go switch to water. <laughs> See, even Nate says, too high, has. Oh, I love this part, Al. We realized if we just did everything in halftime, it sounded better. <laughs> I did a death metal vocal in the background. <laughs> the sound is so good. It's the Sony camera, I'm telling you. I wish I could have grown a beard back then. Thank you, John Zilke. I hate my face. What do you mean? You look like Pete Steele. I wish Chris would have kicked in a double bass here. I can't believe I used that shitty bass for this entire show. Dude, shut shut up. Look at how awesome you look. How can? And it's all hair. Sh shut the hail. It's all shampoo and conditioner budget. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fan of Pantene back then. Pantene's great. I really love it. It made uh, my hair silky and smooth. The per plus is better because you didn't have to use condi the condition. <laughs> All right. So that was an interesting version of fail to be. I think that was 2.75. Uh, yeah, it was. That was pretty heavy, though. Like the end was. Yeah. Like the kick drums, the bass, it, everything sounds so good. <sighs> there's something about there's a magic to the show that you don't know what's happening. You do at the in the moment. You know, it's exciting and cool. But you don't know 30 years later you're going to look back and go, oh, that was crazy, you know. Because we had other good shows like First Avenue. and Sure. Know, but this one, everything just aligned the right way for some reason. It was crazy. So We do have a, we do have a Mirage one with the intro on it for sure. We have a lot of them, actually. Really? Yeah. And we have the, the other one with the, the one F where I'm playing the Gibson. Yeah. For swords and all that. The heavy-ass Gibson for sure. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? That's why I fell over, because the Gibson pulled me down to the floor. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see that. Well, we're going to see that later here, too. Corey, you need to bring those pants back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Predictions for the next tune. You'll never get it. Mm. Free for all. Mm, good guess. See how you are. Good guess. I think that was later, <laughs> oh, though. That yeah. was like 96 or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember either. I'm going to guess um, Temptation of Sin. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't think we were doing that. How then. can we never re like brought it out? We had to wait 30 years to bring it back. Uh, we were saving it missing for YouTube. Time. <laughs> oh, Missing Time would have <laughs> been cool. didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> if only I put it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? We're going to see what the next tune is. Oh, I hate having to hit this button. At some point, do we stop playing Missing Time and stop yeah. playing Mighty Man? Yeah. yeah, that's when the magic died. It's like we stopped playing, like, I don't know. Ooh, Sullivan says Incomplete. That's a good guess, actually. Yeah, I kind of forgot. Yeah, here we go. Every clean, that's not perfect. Yep. With the male and the female must be incomplete. What did I say? I have no clue. What in the world was I talking about? I'm just glad we played this song. I didn't make any sense. Corey, you walked across the mic. <laughs> How did you not fall? <laughs> you walked right over Chris's that kick drum. That was so high. I know, oh, dude. When I, every time I jumped, I, I feared for my life. Especially after you gashed your shin in at that one Ryan's concert. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pantina. Pantina. Here they have Zach Wild now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's great about this tune? Is this part of the song 
people like it, but they don't know what they're in for yet. You know what I mean? Like, we all know what's coming. That's true. The middle you're talking about? Yeah, everyone's like, this is whatever. You know? There was a time after this whole era where I was embarrassed to ever wear those shoes, and now they're popular again. Pat Stuger says every fan has seen this iconic video. Thank you, Pat. Pat's one of our biggest fans. Dang it, Chris. Damn you, Chris. <laughs> I went over to Corey's side so I could see the ladies. How do we not run into each other? <laughs> There's only like turns six feet in front of the riser. There was far less complicated only having one guy with a cord. That's true. <laughs> Mike had wireless. I had wireless. Al was still corded. Yeah. Probably a good idea. Cause he figured he's stationed in front of the mic. Why have a wireless? Yeah. I just love the side shot of Chris playing double bass. I don't know why. <laughs> what shoes are those high sneakers? <laughs> I think they're Reebok. <laughs> My dad is just chilling back there with his 21-year-old wife. Shut look, at that, up. look at that guy in the white I going know, zombie mode there. I know there. he is. <laughs> wow. He went Walking Dead. <laughs> Where's Blam? Wasn't Blam always in the middle of these pits? I think he's going to jump up and do a dive later. But. I think he's doing crank in the bathroom. Right yeah. Do we encore with Orgasmatron? I don't think so. No, not That's yet. in a different video. <laughs> Chris is like, oh, there's proof. There's Lamb. Yep. He, he knew this part was coming. <laughs> you, you asked for him, you got him. He was our Scott Ian. I think I got a boner during this part. He's kind of awkward. Oh yeah, Andrea's up there. Was Sarah hanging out with Michaela and her cousin Amy? Maybe. I'm trying to see who's hanging out with who. Was Jessica at this show? I don't know. I think she went to the first half show. But I love how Corey's bass just shuts off it's sometimes. I, <laughs> like, what are you doing, Cor? Something happened. It's funny, I could pull off the end of that solo when I'm hyped up, but like nowadays I can't do it to save my life. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty freaking heavy. It's a good thing I had the boner because my strap broke right there and held it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia Wilson was at the first gig as well. See right there, that's the, that's what I remember right and there. Sam? Andrea, Katie. Who's the girl uh, next to Sam? Blonde. Is that Beth Evans? She's pretty. For a second, I thought it was Chris's girl. It could be Beth Evans because I went on a date with her around this time. She's pretty. We went to the Mall of America to see Ace Ventura Jurassic Pet Park. Detective. Oh, yeah. Nice. I thought it was Carrie. I saw in the theater like four times because everybody kept wanting to see it. Something more. Ooh. I wonder how the crowd's going to dig it. So fast. Hold on. We just missed Corey's epic intro. Slow it down, Corey. Jesus. Christopher Columbus. Yeah, I wonder what kind <laughs> That's of... That's so fast. Co Corey, you never get to like <laughs> talk do, 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 in the do, mics do. too much, but <laughs> here you give the weirdest intro to a song. Check what? this out. Listen. Hi, intro. 
Schroeder? <laughs> Hold on. Dead Shred. Where? This is being filmed on a freaking toaster <laughs> <laughs> on the side of the stage <laughs> at a concert. Of course, you're not going to hear much. Yeah. Okay. I had to say that. <laughs> okay, Mr. Rogers. I dedicated Rogers. to some girl that was out there. Yeah, exactly. Someone special because there's something more. So you dedicated our lamest song to a girl. I'm just kidding. The song wasn't that lame, though. In this context, um, it feels a little bit out of place, but I like the end. My bass thing is cool. Come on, man. No, I, I like it. My time to shine. You do need like a break from all the craziness, but... Yeah, look, I was like sitting on the riser for a minute. <laughs> yeah. This is our um, Unforgiven. <laughs> A fat bass line. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think cool. I like that bass because the neck was really fast. Nice, thin. It looks like an Ibanez neck or something. Nice for my small hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Remember that girl right there in the front with a plaid? The bigger girl? She was at a lot of our shows. I forgot yes. about her. She's related to somebody, right? Like Chris's, ne Chris's aunt or something? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Huge fan of metal. Is that Tony Polloway? I don't know, but Corey's baseline stealing the show right here. Every dude had a hat and a mullet. It's hard to tell yeah, them apart. Yeah, Rapids for. Susie, were you guys up the only for the chicks? Uh, if so, it didn't work. For me, at least. The whole front row's there for Al. Is that a Rob Jadnack back there banging his head? Probably. See, half the fun of this video is seeing the people in the crowd that we forgot about. Listen how loud Corey's bass is even on stage. I love it. Now here's where it gets good. The middle break, right? I hate it when you can't hear the bass live. So this is cool. Turns into Iron Maiden right here. <laughs> Well, this guitar part was sweet playing this with you, Mike. Oh, yep. Amber was there too. That's who Sarah's there with. She's there with Amber. Okay. So that's why I was like, this song's for someone special. I like where we do the harmonizing lead, Mike. That's, yeah. That was my East. favorite. It's a fun riff. That felt like Maiden. Totally. <laughs> Whose little brother just did a stage dive? <laughs> I have no idea what I did here. So, oh, just so right. everybody knows, the girl that's front and center with the bob haircut, that's the girl that I lost my virginity to. Okay, TMI. <laughs> hey, you kept talking about your virginity. Come that's on now. True, that's true. I'm just jealous because I didn't lose mine until 10 years after this. <laughs> here you go. Yep. This is our dream theater part. This is so sweet. Notice how we stopped running around to play our instruments. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is why we didn't play Prague. And then when it goes into halftime coming up. I love that. And it's still Slapping. Not, it's still not the best part. This part I love. I swear to God, Amber leaned into Sarah and said, oh, my God, Mike is so hot. Why yeah, did I ever go right. out with Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Modulate. That's why the, she got, went out with you. Oh, Look at dude. that leg. All the right, best part is here. Yep. Ooh. Chris messed it up. I can yeah. only say that because he's in Florida right and now. And then I sang over it. <laughs> <laughs> my harmony. Oh, yeah. Way too fast. <gasps> yeah, Chris got excited. Yeah. 
That was uh, Dave Yeager. <laughs> it looks like a, it looks like somebody let Cindy out of the asylum. <laughs> she's like rock back and forth. <laughs> like a <laughs> she's wearing a large like sweater. Like a caged animal. <laughs> like the sleeves of her sweater are way too long, so it's just like a straight jacket. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that was that was just bizarre. It's like uh. <laughs> Did my dad have like a syringe? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Yeah, those were weird times. I remember the first time. Do you like, think she remembers that show? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if she remembers much, but um, I remember the first time like she spent the night <laughs> and they were dating, and I woke up and she was pounding on my door, going, "Boom, boom, boom!" It's like six in the morning. I'm like, "What the fuck?" She's like, "Your dad's supposed to move your truck." <laughs> And she sounded like a 10-year-old or something. I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> Get out the syringe, Dad. <laughs> we need the lewds. Okay. Oh. Anyhow, we have only like two songs or two songs left, I think. So. Okay. Are we, we going to, are we going to go have dinner after this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. White, White Castle. Yeah, if you guys didn't show up at 10, 15. <laughs> hey, I like White Castle. Is there anything open past White, midnight? White Castle. No, I, I have keep to. you, we got to hit downtown Osseo. I know. I have to pee real quick. You guys want to jibber jab? Sure. There's, there's a White Castle something. nearby. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Is it really open all night? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's not nearby, is it? There is. Brooklyn Park. Yeah, that's way down on Brooklyn Boulevard, though. You don't want to go down there this time of night. Don't give away the location. It's like... <laughs> don't give far. away the location. <laughs> don't give it away. <laughs> I mean, White oh. Castle, Bemidji. Um. But there's some pretty cool bars, actually, downtown Osseo. Um, I can never remember the name of them, though. Some kind of, like, dive bars. Not as good as... Jelly Bean and Julius. It's not, but it's close to here. Denny's we're not open, open that late. We're trying not to stay open late. We're going to have a bar, but probably close at midnight on the weekends at the latest. How's the live <sighs> music going? We we haven't really had a full band yet. It's just been like acoustic, you know. Last Friday we had two acts play on Friday night, and then last night we had a guy... A uh, local guy who used to play around here a lot that does like a one man band type of thing. Was it well received? Yeah. Ooh. Except for the old people don't want music during dinner. They're just like, you should turn it down. It's too loud. Will it become like Blues Brothers where they'll throw like ribs at people? We don't have any <laughs> chicken wire. Chicken <laughs> wire. <laughs> Corey, you should just Boo, do like. Ooh, here's a spare rib. It's Boom. A, <laughs> probably the best line of any movie ever is when they walk into the country bar <laughs> and the saxophone guy blue lou marini just goes chicken wire like, <laughs> he didn't get it <laughs> until they started whizzing the wh- whipping the bottles at him yeah i really wish denny's was still open that'd be good right now denny's grand slam what no denny's is terrible are you kidding me it used to be good uh, I used to have lower standards, I think. I don't know. I don't want to give us away, but there's a Perkins really close to here. Yeah, it closes mm. at like 10. <laughs> oh. I know, it right? sucks, man. Dude, Perkins supposed to be all night. Like, what good is a they Perkins? Used to be, they used to be open all night because yeah. we would go to the one where we Yeah, lived. well, they've changed a lot in the last yeah. couple of years. I know. They just decided they can't pay like one person to stay overnight. You know? All right, you guys. Is it like you guys ready for the next already? one? For this one, I'm going to hold the Nancy Wilson shoe. You want to touch it? I want to smell it. Don't smell it. What good is a shoe if you don't smell it? It smells like (laughs) the essence of rose petal. (laughs) I'm like a dog. (laughs) (laughs) You just inhaled a bunch of dust. That's pretty much. So, you guys, there was a bunch of guys from your class that were just at the restaurant, like. I was talking to him right before I came over here. Ooh. Dylan Matheson. I was going to say and, uh, bullies that used to push us around. Uh, Chris Stiff and his brother Dan Stiff. And um, if you ever see else. Jim, Jim but G. But he just sent me a picture of his tickets from the Mirage. For this show? I think I saw Dylan's name yep. in the thing. Oh, my God. March so 27th, cool. 1994 is White Fear Chain, Sanctus. No, that's not Suck. this show. Yes, it is. March 27th, 1994. Yeah. No. Yes. The band after us is Acheron. At this show. 
Acheron's backstage after we get done playing, so I have proof. Really? Okay, then. That is a show really close by. It was a really cool Al show. Al said this is the... Th- That's what I thought. So we played back-to-back shows week yeah. in two weeks? I think so, because we were excited to open for so. Butto. This is not White Fear Chain show. This is Acheron. But that's this is the one date. where the guitar player was so drunk he had to lean against the wall to stay standing. So up. then we're celebrating a ro- the wrong show. Yeah, sorry people. <laughs> but it's close. It's the same year. What what one was this then? Do you have it? Uh-oh. Senility has set in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to change the title of this. Do you have the date on this? Uh, Somewhere I do. I have no clue. But this is like in, during some spring break no, or something. No, you're wrong. Because the Man Unkind guys are in the front row, and Man Unkind is the opening band. Yeah, but they, they may have just, that one dude may have just come to watch us. No. Corey, we're not Al acting. messaged us and said, it's the 30th anniversary. Is Acheron on that show? Maybe they changed maybe, it. Why is the maybe whole they were Acheron added. band in this that, video? That could have been. White prob- Fear Chain, Sanctus, Suck, Bent Vengeance, Avalanche, no. Porcelain God, and Scott, Man Unkind. back me up. Back me up. And Morbius. You know what? I think Corey might be right, and I think they might have like lost a, an act off of there, and then Acheron. You guys, it. Acheron is backstage warming up. When we get done, like they're going to come out. Right, but they probably took Are you the sure? No, because I remember seeing Butto. Oh. Remember? He was like, he, he warmed up by doing his vocal thing. And then his oh, voice yeah. cracked, and we all laughed. Yeah. Okay, then okay. what show is this? This yeah. is a killer show from 94 during like spring break where everybody shows okay, up. Okay, well, Mike, March 27th and 94 would have been our spring break. Well, it's This not is what I'm telling show. you. This is some weird... And we never did back-to-back shows. We always only ever played like no, that's once not a true. month. That's not true. We did do a weekend. For these big ones, though. Oh. We would not have done yeah, but two this one big wasn't shows. Considered like a big one. That one was considered a big one. <laughs> you need to figure out your dates. You need to now, watch the rest of this. Now video. we're celebrating the wrong video. <laughs> You're gonna see. Why are we here? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> we fooled everyone. This into is watching. actually from the summer of '93 <laughs> when I was dating that girl. It's the wrong year, even. I think you're right. <laughs> this is '93. '93? No, I blame Al. Really? Yeah. Because I am eight here i think and you guys are like 17 and 16 so that would have been junior year wait no do you have an early birthday october no because the first time we played first avenue was may of 93 you guys all i know is acheron right. comes on after we're done here and I've who s- has the gig list motherfucker who's got the gig list the vi- the video has the, the date on it. I have to find it. Mike the, has the, the book. book is out there. Get it? No, no. The book just has a bunch of dates. It doesn't say. Pull out oh, the yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. Where is the tape? All right, we got. <laughs> we need to settle this now before this video is over. Okay, Cor- <laughs> Nate. It's ninety three. It is ninety three because I put it on the original video that I uploaded the Swords of Sadness from. Okay, so just tack another year on it. Okay, so this is our. This is forty <laughs> Christmas of ninety three. No, thirty first. <laughs> Just this is our another th- year on it. Who cares? People are, like, people are like, who cares? Just play the next song. <laughs> Did you say Cromlech? No. Acheron. Remember, that's the year I Here's got a my ticket. goiter removed. Here's a ticket. 93. For June of 94. Acheron's headlining. Cromlech, so Sanctus, Bent Vengeance, and Man Unkind. It's not this one. That was a okay, different hold show. Okay, on. hold on. Here it is. Okay. Here it is. December 26 and 93. That's it. Christmas. Ah. Acheron, Sanctus, Suck, Correo, Snafu, Morbius, Bent Vengeance, and Man Unkind. A lot of bands on this show. See, Bridget says it. 93. Oh. So we're not crazy. I always thought it was Man Unkind. December of 93. <laughs> okay, Al, we have to blame you for this Snafu. <laughs> I don't, I'm not blaming Snafu. What? Okay, <laughs> but the one that he's talking about. That would be the thirtieth anniversary of. Okay, we'll have was to this one with okay. Butto. So we'll have to do that one Find in that like a tape. year. <laughs> Butto from White Fruit do Chain. You have the Butto show? <laughs> <laughs> People who don't know Butto is like, what are they talking about? Uh, Mike, do you have the Butto tapes? Well, White Fear Chain <laughs> was their new band, but the first, the original band last was crack. Last hmm, Crack. I remember the smell of my Butto. <laughs> You know what's funny? Their band was called Last Crack, and his name was Butto. I mean, there's got to be a fetish there or something. <laughs> Are you guys ready for the next tune? Everyone's like, this is like watching old men at a nursing home arguing about. Grumpy old men fishing. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, there's only 16 minutes left. I'm so sad. Here we go. Oh, we know what's coming up. I hear the drop D. Uh, this is a dead giveaway. Sorry. <laughs> 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 That's great. Was that Kenny? <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Probably Kenny. Uh. <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> I love how halfway through this podcast we realize we're watching the wrong year. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> It's okay. This is uh, worth it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I would tell... Uh, the, white, the white V is back. <laughs> I would tell Sam to watch this, but he's probably playing a gig with his yeah, band I was gonna, I was going to invite him, but I thought of the same thing. So, Al, I, I whipped out the white V for this. What did you whip out? Uh, I still got the... <laughs> oh, you just dropped it. Yeah. I, I had locks. So. Look at the uh, strap girl headbanging. I love her. Oh, wait. Is that a guy? No. If I remember right, Amber does a stage dive. Yeah, she stands up. She's like, oh, wait, I don't want to do this. Right here. <laughs> that was pretty good, actually. I think she's she kicks Sarah in the head or something. <laughs> Sammy. Sam, yep. <laughs> He's so happy right here. Watch. Two guys caught him in the yep. air. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yep, the Charvel Avenger has come to life. Turned into a backup guitar at this point. Al, didn't Amber and Sarah go to the bar next door and just like get served drinks <laughs> without showing their ID? Probably. I remember you telling me that. They oh, had yeah. just showed something else, maybe. Okay, this was the 90s. I feel good now because you guys used to smoke me when it came to like historical dates of the band, but I get, I have all the videos, so I think I have a better. That's funny. I grasp swore this was March of that. Year. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's okay, Al. I think you only remember two First Avenue gigs. <laughs> Al was like, "We yeah, played there four even... times." Like, yeah. I did not remember the other. Yeah, once in the entry, three times at the main stage, I believe. I didn't even have backup guitar at this. Really? Oh, yeah. you could have used mine if, if shit went really downhill. Someone called it. I love the toothpaste Charvel. Oh, nice. Cotton Amash. Yeah. It doesn't sound like Cotton Amash at all. <laughs> oh, I still have my Allen wrench at the back of the headstock. <laughs> I love that. Mike never ages. It's called unicorn milk. Drink it nightly. It's called Luberderm lotion. It's called playing guitar for a living. <laughs> is it me or does D sound heavy as hell right here? It does. It's probably Corey's bass. It is his bass. Dude, you keep ripping on that bass, but it's putting out for you. It is. Look at Chris's surgical double bass right here. No shoes, right? Barefoot? Yep. Or did he have socks on? Oh, he may have. So they slid a little bit. Those quintessential high top white Reeboks, if you're not wearing them, are you even thrashing? <laughs> <laughs> you're not metal thrashing mad, that's for sure. They, they were really cozy on your ankles, actually. I should uh, mirror this with, oh, I did, with the newest uh, concert we did. Chris is doing some insane fills. You just don't hear it. See? Oh, yeah. It's hard to notice. It's so Is he doing double bass here? Nope. Single. Remember we talked about it? Du -du 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 -du. One foot. Du -du -du -du. There's Loshi standing behind Sebastian Bach. Wouldn't that sound cool, double bass? <laughs> yeah, don't bring that up again. That was a sore spot for Chris. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, that bass is toning really good. I think Corey had the best headbang at this point. And the fall. There it is. Corey, you realize how close you were to hitting the freaking stage riser, the drum riser? <laughs> no. Could you imagine if you <laughs> fell back and smacked okay, the Okay, you freeze head? framed. Wait. The guy in the middle of the screen, I guarantee you it's Tony Polloway. I don't know who that is. I thought it was the guy in my grade that I thought it was Sebastian Bach, the guy with the leather jacket. Now he's an engineer. He works for like Polaris. Oh, nice. Okay, so that was probably would you guys say that was the peak of the show or was incomplete? Is that the end? No. Mm, did we even do what it? What do we end the show with? Incomplete, maybe. We already no, played. We did it already. That was mid set. Oh, that's right. You guys are gonna be surprised at what we end with, I think. Free for all. Why do you keep saying free for all? No, we wouldn't do a cover. Oh. We definitely wouldn't end with a cover. No. Scott, you guys realize this is a Mirage show, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do recognize the venue. I thought this was um, foul play. The snare is tighter than my neck after a Sancti show. <laughs> Chris had that thing <laughs> tuned up, my friend. I think it was a piccolo tuning with a 12-inch freaking marching snare. Okay. So, do you guys think after I get done with this, we should upload this as its own video, not the podcast, but the actual video, or should we wait mm. for the uh, possible documentary? That Just may put it happen? out. You sure? Let people watch it in its entirety. Sure. Okay. Then I can watch it later. Okay. When I'm zooted. All right. And have my midnight snack. <laughs> of course, I locked the Floyd Rose. What are you, crazy, Sullivan? It's funny because I did, but I never used the whammy bar. So it was kind of, yeah, it didn't really make sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jeremy has been listening, not commenting. Awesome. All right, you guys, we have two songs left. Corey, okay. what's your prediction for one of the songs? You keep saying. Two left after Swords of Sadness. No idea. Well, it says 10 minutes left. That could be four mm-hmm. songs at the speed we're playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. And it's not Orgasmatron? No, no. Th- I do have a video of that with Al Town and um, Blem. Well, now that I know the correct date, <laughs> I'm, g- I'm going to guess we do My Demand. Hmm. All right. Yeah, because of the jam in the middle where we draw it out for an extra five not, minutes. I won't bet because I did skim through this whole thing today. But Never the do do ding 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 Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> Styrene, quit being stingy, Mike. It's not stingy. It's um. It's called gatekeeping. G- control freak. <laughs> Scott's doing an interview. Mike is a keeper of the gate. Scott's doing an interview <laughs> tomorrow with me. He's like, "You want to come to my place? We'll we'll shoot." I'm like, "Can we do it here?" And then I'll edit it and yeah. I'll make it all prettied up. He's like, "Fine." Freak. Guy's trying to start his own channel. Help him out. Well, he's gonna. It's gonna be exclusive to his channel, but. Okay. I don't know. Sure. We're going to wear costumes. It's going to be fun. All right. You guys ready? Nate says average. Are you oh, gonna... fuck. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I got to say something. Forgot about that. The newest gig that we did where Corey fell just like that, and I mirrored it in my video. Yeah. It's funny because back then we're just like, Corey's being crazy. But now that we're all old, we're like, did Corey just die on stage? <laughs> like, literally pass away. <laughs> Should we get the defibrillator? Well, the difference is now I look like a speed bump because I have a huge <laughs> gut. <laughs> And now Mike and I are like EMT mode. Yeah. Now the Quick, danger check his pulse. <laughs> the danger went from Corey hitting his head on the riser to me tripping over Corey. <laughs> All right, here we go. Al, what are you doing? Uh, g- greeting female oh. fans. Our manager. He looks so proud. He's like ten minutes. Freebird. Freebird. <laughs> Free it's like <laughs> the part of Dean Douglas is now played by Jack Black. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad looks so proud, telling us 10 minutes. He was happy seeing this, this show. I think yeah. in the Sanctus biopic, Jack Black would play a great Dean Douglas. No, he's going to play you, Gord. It is free for all. Are you kidding? Well, someone said Freebird, so I think we just kind of uh, humored them. We do play the whole song. Though. Really? Yeah. This is before I did the extreme solo. That's kind of cool. We should play it like this. Why didn't we do this last time? Because we're lame now. 
Well, that's no excuse. <laughs> Your manager looks like Danny McBride. <laughs> that was uh, Papa Dean in the young days. Yep. That makes yeah. no sense. That made no sense, Al. <laughs> Worst flow of all time. Hey, who said lyrics have to rhyme? I was already breaking the mold. Hey, Come it was now. a free-for-all. Yeah. I love how the guy from Man on Kind has his arm across the monitor like he's just a proud uncle or something. Double bass, Chris. Come on. Yes. <laughs> I'm a yeah, sucker for that. Like, yeah, you followed him. It sounded like, like freaking. It. Sounded like testament. <laughs> no, more like anthrax. Solo sounded I good. Really remember this show now, knowing that the date that it is. That weird intro that I said was because like Amber was there. I think Emily was there. Emily was here. I think so. Like huh. three or four girls that I like liked or dated or whatever. I think even Christina Lester was there. Like all these girls that I had whatever in the last year, they were all at the same show. Corey, you did all this for women. Yes, I did. We we were actually in it for the metal. You wanted poons. Yeah, I only had one girlfriend and here. And I'm thinking. The girl that I like the most is in the front row. Why won't she? Why won't she <laughs> date me? I had no idea Emily yeah, was, was Sarah's at the show. best friend. All right, I want to see if we do that ending that we always do. Was Sarah already living at your house by now? Soloing, I think. No. Yes, we did it. That was the fastest free for all. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but it actually sounded pretty good. Three and a half minute song done in two minutes. Because <laughs> Dean said ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? You can't fault Corey for doing all this for women because back then we all had our agendas. You know, like I was doing it because I wanted to be Kirk Hammond mixed with Alex Skolnick. Al, you did it. Why did you do it? Just to be a rock star. Yeah. Because, I mean, ever since we started just as a duo, we always dreamt of this. So it was always a big thing. Corey did it for the music, too. I know. Well, I mean, I did, but the time period is really coming back to me here. This is when... Uh, Hormones were raging. I spent, like, every day at Emily's house because she was pregnant with her son. We don't and have all to And all of her friends, like, cut her off. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just saying, I'm, th I'm remembering this time period now seeing... Yes. All those faces, and I remember that day, like, oh, there's that one girl who, whatever, you know, and they were all there at the same show. That's yeah. why I did that weird, like, this is for someone special. Like, who? I get it could it. have been any one of them. I get it. Where was Christopher's mind at this point? Mm. Well, he had, he had carried that girl, but it was like I think he was finally really dedicated to the band after you know, well, kind yeah, of thinking I mean, of it as like a side chick. How many I times think. have we played there without using the drum riser? I think he felt like, you know, I mean, he yeah, he was at a higher level than what he had been at before, too, and he really liked that. Well, we know? were finally where we saw Regime was at. Not as far as popularity, but we were finally, we had the big stage. We had, you know, the bigger crowd. We just felt, you know, like we finally did what we set out to do. Yeah. Maybe that's the problem. We set our goals too low. Mm. Well, you, you do have to set incremental goals right yeah that makes sense Corey did it all for the nookie <laughs> <laughs> you could take that cookie <laughs> but you know what in the end it worked out for everybody somehow you know would you say oh yeah yeah i mean you had done that one where you like did do you think we made it big you know and chris is the only one that said no right it's because he wanted to be like tom cruise level famous but that was pretty cool, <laughs> you know. Sullivan, how did you lock your Floyd Rose? Oh, I just did the uh, locks at the nut. I didn't lock it. I didn't never like put a shim underneath the bridge or anything like that. Never did anything like that. So, well, the funny thing is, my I wouldn't say my dream, but I always had a plan, and it was like finally make it with the band, get a record deal, 
at least have one album be a one hit wonder that even went into my into the early 2000s for me with my other bands that was your goal to be a one hit wonder well the plan was make enough money so i could buy a restaurant and that would be my retirement fund when my band failed that's funny how that worked and out and it's like that's kind of what ended up happening anyway without the band without yeah. ever really having the record deal or the one hit wonder i mean i got to go to new york and play cbgb's and almost get into the record industry with a different band with a different band later but that's like almost um, marrying your next girlfriend we're, we're but here's here. the thing i always say that the stuff i did later with hook echo and the reason why i played with them was when i played with them it felt like when I played with you guys, yeah, that's how whatever. I knew it uh, It clicked because that chemistry, that whatever, whatever you want to call it, you know, kind of having a similar background and it being totally different people and they're strangers. But once you start playing, you're like, oh, man, this guy in a way has Al vibes to me because he's playing rhythm guitar and singing, you know. Are you and saying I'm like Philip Wright? No. You, Mike, you're one in a million. I'm just kidding, Philip. Philip is, is he a big watching? fan of the channel, actually. I don't know if he's watching this, but Phil, art. No, and then we then we had a whole arc. But I mean, the initial like meeting. I know, Corey. and I hadn't had a band for a long time that was good. I know. And then when you it it when you feel those feelings of oh, I feel like these guys. When you get that brother vibe, we're like oh, we're we we all click and we get along. And when you play together, it sounds good too. That's the hardest part is yeah. like actually having the music have that chemistry. It's like personal and musical chemistry have to jive. Yes. Art of guitar question. Sure. You did a really cool short a few months back where it was fans walking into the Mirage in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Was that this show? I don't know, actually, to tell you the truth. It was like Matt and Nate and wait, no, because Nate had his girlfriend at that in that video i don't think she's jamie here. jamie is not here i don't think unless they're standing in the back or no something. that was in 94 because in this he's only in oh eighth you're grade, right he already you're right said. because a lot of people had like um t-shirts that wouldn't exist in 93 i don't think so hmm. all right should do a q and a stream we might do that at the end of this one actually but let's do the last seven minutes still maybe i was wrong there's probably three songs left <laughs> all right that speed you yeah. guys want to take a quick guess oh I would say um, we wouldn't end on my demand. Let's just see. <laughs> this. Oh, it is our last tune. Average. <laughs> That's right. We'd gotten played on 93X. Remember that? Before this show. Yeah. I was hitting the wrong notes. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Wrong chord. It was way off. Uh, Go back out to the audience at the end of this and get one more wide shot. Yeah. Now, Mike, you know why I think this show was big is because what I had said before the show, they had played this on 93X oh, a couple that's of weeks right. before it. So we had people come in. So I think that that helped. I forgot about that. Remember the first time they played one of our songs on the radio? I almost freaking had a heart attack while driving. I remember where I was at when I heard it, and I was yeah. like, this is unreal. Loud and local? Yeah, it was a Sunday night. Yep. Yeah. Average is probably one of the hardest songs to play live ever. Yeah. But we're so jacked up here, it feels easy. 
Someone says, do you still have all these shoes? Well, I'd say if someone had their shoes from high school 30 years later, That's a problem. they're probably a sociopath. <laughs> They'll, they'll smell really bad. Okay, look at the people in the front row are finally getting excited. China boy. Yep. <laughs> Would you call me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Chris was being racist. Or did he re rename it the Korean boy? I think so, yeah. Mike, at the, the beginning soul, of this the song. The soul man. At the beginning of this song, we did this right out of the intro and I was totally hitting the wrong notes. It was so bad. I was like, oh. Well, there's actually a mistake on the demo, too, if you listen to it. One of us is off. No, I was like two frets off, like a whole <laughs> step up that was way off. <laughs> Nate says Aaron Kroll. <laughs> oh, I don't see him in there. Oh, the lady's yelling at Dean. <laughs> we have to get off the stage. Probably. You know what's weird is we're so young here, we probably could have played a whole nother set and been just fine, you know? Right. Now, <laughs> you, hey, you, it's arms folded judging guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. A lot of people in the crowd are trying to look cool. Oh, who's coming up? Red Ooh. Pants Boy. Red Pants Boy. Another stage Ooh, diver. Oh, I forgot about that one. That's you should have did a stage dive into the 21 plus. Hey, but they side. actually carry yeah. him up. Look at that. They're just grabbing his ass. Sweet. Okay, Al, here's the part. We put music in between metal. I like this part. This sounds like a um, motivational speaker intro song. Like. Dude, some Alan Great Parsons. metal needs. Some dynamics. Melody, yeah. This it, is needs, like an, it needs a breakdown. This is like a Megadeth meets Alan Parsons part. Especially yeah, in the dual harmony coming part. up is awesome. Yeah. Listen, everybody, listen to this sweet dual harmony. Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember this part when we did the yeah. first Avenue footage and all the girls were holding hands? And You don't remember that? No, but that sounds hot. I love this solo. Played around with octaves. I'm playing power chords too. Nice. Makes it heavy. Here you go. Listen to this lead. Jeez. When Mike would play this, I'm like, I have the best guitar player in the world in this band. You know what I was thinking? Dude. I wish I was Alex Skolnick. <laughs> uh oh, the zombie guy's back. I felt that way about the whole band right here. I was like, Everybody in this band is doing exactly. Oh, Corey, you would on the crowd? Yeah. I was in that pit. Okay, I got to rewind that later. And That's cool. Look at your strap, Corey. <laughs> it's behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> it's on his waist. It's become a fanny pack. Yeah. And he just holds it up. Wow. Sweet. I'm surprised one of us didn't trash our guitars. Corey probably wanted to. Then he's like, wait, I paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> I paid two ninety nine for this piece. <laughs> I'm going to have to work to pay. I bought this at B Sharp, damn it. I'm going to have to put in some more hours at KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Got to cook up a few more wings for this one. <laughs> Why did they shut the lights off? At yes, I was definitely working at KFC at this point. They were trying to cut us off the stage, probably. Uh-huh. Like, oh, we're not going to get them off. This is their best show ever. Let them live their dream. Yep. I threw picks out like a douche. <laughs> I still do. They'll that. never have this much young Punani in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like not in sync with me. But somehow at the end, he does it. Oh, that was sweet, though. I mean, seriously, would you want to follow that? Or is it boring? <laughs> Well, that's why Akron got wasted before they came up. <laughs> Look, I think I came in my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best one right there. Tony's awesome. Okay, look. Akron's drum set also. Yeah. And sadly, the singer is behind the kid who recently passed away. Look at this picture. Remember that? <laughs> You're all slaves. This is what I was nervous for. I'm like, did somebody write something really bad on the wall? Oh, I'm sure. Can you remember him? Yeah. Passed away recently. Yep. 
Listen, listen to this. Would you like their social security numbers too, sir? Yeah, you know what? He play a lot of tricky, you know. Did you hear? That my mom talks. You know what? That's like your your, your, your <laughs> Korean uncle. <laughs> that guy, he play a lot of tr- <laughs> a lot of tricky. <laughs> that's some of the best footage ever, though. You know, if you, you want to see what it's like being in a band, deal with a lot I of that. I edited so much you know? out at the end because that guy talked uh, for like twenty minutes. Oh to yeah, Tony. Really? yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally, Tony at the end goes, <laughs> "Okay, Happy New Year." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Can I come stay at your house? <laughs> I want you to teach me that. I'm just, I'm just going to stay at your house. He played tricky. I love it. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> that was fun. <laughs> I forgot to rewind it. I wanted to see Corey in the pit. <laughs> Let me see. Corey, you actually jumped out in the crowd? Yeah. Did you catch a couple feels or what? I don't know. Let's see. Where was it? Not there. Okay. Okay. I don't see Corey. <laughs> Corey's, oh, God, yes, you're in the crowd that he whole was. time? He was. Okay, let's watch. I want to see if I can see when Corey goes in the crowd. I think it's off camera. Corey's like, there's a lot of beautiful ladies here tonight. I need to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, why didn't you... That's funny. After this killer show, none of them... Any of them still didn't want to have anything to do with me, ap- even after all this. Well, there's stage success. Corey and there's not stage Corey. Right. Oh, it's during my solo you jumped out, maybe, right? Right, th- he's out there now, right? Let me move this. <laughs> yeah. Right oh, there, there you go. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> you almost killed somebody with your headstock. <laughs> oh, but yeah, but did you see people are like headbanging right in front of him like crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They dug that. Corey, how did you do that? Look how athletic you were. No kidding. <laughs> he runs hey, across. Me, I was, I was, runs a, across, I was 170 across. pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> Corey, you jumped on the stage, no hands, <laughs> yeah. and did a barrel roll. <laughs> well, I couldn't have my base hit the floor or whatever. That was incredible. That, that was, that's Oops. actually the coolest part of this that I think I <laughs> missed. Yeah. In a I long didn't know time. that existed. I didn't see that when I first checked it out. Okay, I'm going to put this up to your neck, Corey. Sorry. No, okay. that was total rock star. I mean, yeah, Corey was like, he was, I don't know, just running on different kind so, of fuel. This isn't just, well, we figured out this is not from 94. This is from 93. We messed up. But um, I want you guys to know that uh, the planning committee for the class of 94 30th reunion oh. is talking about maybe having it at the bar. Really? Couldn't so what if we just surprise them with uh Sanctus reunion in the middle of uh, your guys' Dude, like reunion? Dude, like three songs or something? Just something do whatever the fuck we want, <laughs> and then we'll do karaoke. We could learn a whole of set of covers. We could be <laughs> Joey Jojo Junior. Shabadoo. You know, why don't we all play, over again? Why don't we play every hit that was from our graduation year? So it'll sure. be like freaking Vanilla Ice. That shit. would be uh, really cool. Ace of Base. No, it would be like um um what's his name Ace with the big bass. pants. The big Ace. yeah Ace of Base. Um, I saw the sun. We're playing that in my new band actually too. Who would oh MC Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do a little uh, Can't touch this And then we could do Some funky Cole Medina <laughs> It's 94 So we could do Some Alice in Chains Yeah Okay let's do a 94 Tribute How about Rick show. Roll Let's just do Rick Roll But You mean in, Tootsie Roll In 2026 <laughs> Tootsie Roll I do think in 2026 <laughs> You're thinking 80s out We yeah. should <laughs> Finally re-record The album And Uh re-release it that's what i'm hoping but i think one of us is gonna die before that happens no <laughs> and we'll then we see. do a show and play the whole album front to back okay mm. i'm up for it if it's the last thing i do on this earth i want to play that first song we haven't played that in years oh situation zero yes mm. that is a good it's one song. of my favorites okay you guys let's do the rest as a q a mm. and uh you guys got to leave it like midnight 
I don't have to leave anytime. Okay. I do what I want. It's true. Midnight <laughs> will be Easter. <laughs> My daughter has the Cartman shirt that where he's a, a girl. I do what I, I want. Do what I, want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I do what I want. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring the uh, comment section up a little bit higher. So put it between Al and Corey here. Oh, oh okay. All right, you guys. So if you want to do three things, one, give a thumbs up, give a like. We're at 109. That's awesome. Two, if you want to uh, give a super chat, that would be sweet. I'll use it to take everybody out to eat to Manny's. Ooh. Once again, including Scott. And three, slap a question on there if you guys want an answer. We'll do our best. Mm. Spongy's power went out. That's how powerful we were crushing with power. We literally put his power out with our jams. All right. Somebody keeps talking about Matty McFly. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not an official announcement, Pat. It's just an idea. Yeah, Corey, I don't know where that came from. Maybe the bottle of Jack, but let's do it. <laughs> well, we're two years away from the 30th anniversary of the album that broke the band up. It's true. We could defeat oh. it this time. If we don't re-record it, we should at least relearn the songs and do a show. At Shh. least <laughs> record the show and put it on your channel. There you go. There's your content. Okay. Pre-plan it for 2026. It would sound better just played. Should we call Gary? This is how it was. I'm just yeah. Kidding. No. <laughs> even if we just mic'd it up really Thank well. You, even dude, if we did it here, if we even we did it in the in the Art of Guitar studio, live studio. That. That'd be cool. You know. The dude, you just bought somebody an appetizer of like what? What would cost two dollars? That wouldn't even get you a pat of butter at Manny's. That's true. We need two pats of butter, <laughs> you guys. Might be a glass of water. Yeah, we need we need more than that. I'm just kidding. Uh John, why not record some new songs? Oh boy. Yeah, because we're all, nobody wants to hear new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> none of us are in that headspace anymore that we could write metal like that kind of metal stuff. We'd be writing about weird stuff like um, aching backs and stuff. You know? <laughs> waking up to pee. I'm sure we could waking up dig to pee, deep waking and up to pee. We could maybe do a song. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like the Eagles when they put out a greatest hits and they put out one song with it. We could do that. Mm. I just compared us to the Eagles. Good lord. As long as it's barbecue themed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now with Corey's restaurant, we have You a should know thing. that when we when we rehearse our bad bromance cover songs, we have like alternate versions with like weird al food lyrics. <laughs> we play Alanis Morissette. You we do oh, all I really want is some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her live uh, recently. Uh, uh, hi. She had uh, this whole montage before she came out like she was dead. Then she comes out. It's like, oh, who's that weird looking short lady? We've got the ribs that kill. <laughs> <laughs> we could just do this We've all night. Watch. Everybody's going to have a barbecue theme song. Let's see. It's so easy to do. It literally for every song. <laughs> just a different food <laughs> variation. In 93, I was in Southeast Iowa, <sighs> 125 pounds dripping wet during my lifeguarding days. Eating three thousand calories a day. Yep, me too, buddy. <laughs> I worked at KFC. I probably ate ten thousand calories a day. Both you guys made chicken <laughs> in your days, I yes. believe. I uh, Al mean, worked at Hardee's in the six-month period when they introduced <laughs> fried chicken. I only worked there for two weeks. I know, <laughs> and we heard about every single day. I'm just kidding, <laughs> guys. I make chicken. <laughs> Al, can it we please so play gross. the song? Can we please play the song? <laughs> it's so gross. 20 bucks from Hollow. Thank you so much. Exit Sandman is going to be a big <laughs> money maker. Hold on. Too. I got I to gotta do what? this. Thank you so much for the 20 bucks. Where are the damn? Oh, here we go. Atlantis is dope. We need some applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Master of crumpets. <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. I thought it was strumpets. <laughs> Yeah, you guys both worked fast food. I never had to do that, thank God. I can't even imagine. And, you know, of the two weeks that I worked, one week of my wages had to pay for my brown pants and orange <laughs> shirt. <laughs> You're going to pay for your uniform. I still had to pay for it even though I quit. <laughs> my God. And then somebody else wears them or something. I, you donated them? Well, yeah, you don't get to keep them. Like, I don't even have to give them back to Hardy's. But you, you bought quit. them. I don't know what. Or happened. you renting them? That's weird. I would have thrown them away. I'm sure. So, <laughs> can you guys name the restaurants you worked at? It's a polyester ghee. <laughs> well, after that, more of a smock. So, Al started I, at Hardee's. I became a dishwasher at the Seasons restaurant at the in Golf Course. Oh, the yeah. Seasons. Didn't that become Tequila Berries? No. Okay. 
Greg, we didn't meet Butto. We saw him live, and he was weird, of course. But he was very muscular yeah, and pale. Yeah, we met him. I didn't meet Butto. You met Butto? I'm he jealous. was walking around like he was. Yeah, but I never met him. I met Pete Steele. I didn't meet Butto. Yeah, we met Pete Steele. Pete Steele, the typo negative, mm. you guys, played the small stage at the Mirage. Pie of the Beholder. <laughs> <laughs> One would oh be. Oh my god, I'm loving it. One is bun. You could just change every Metallica song to a food. It'd be easy. <laughs> I'm playing a gig in two weeks. What do you do in between songs? And, br- <coughs> and brisket for all. <laughs> it just goes on and on. I still like limp brisket. Want, is it <laughs> a good idea good. <laughs> to sell my PV with digital effects for an Ampeg cab or amp head or nah? I don't know. I'm not into. The, I don't want to sell my hipster. It's hard to say because it, I always regret everything I sell. Limp brisket. Pans up, <laughs> now pans down. Enter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. So are we supposed to be doing a Q&A right now? No yeah. one's giving I, us uh, any cues. Uh, <laughs> they're just giving us funny songs. Yeah, this is what happens on the internet. <laughs> like one time we did the weirdest thing and everybody had a freaking response to it. it was well, great. do you remember we did the podcast and we went into Rocky impersonations for like... Dan Iverson oh, says yeah, he saw a typo right. at the VFW in St. Joseph. I believe what? it. How? Typo Negative played a lot of really well, yeah. sketchy shows in the beginning, you know. That would be the St. Cloud. <laughs> That's a long way to the shop if you want a sausage roll. Yep. <laughs> That's official Angus lyrics. <laughs> okay, we're just... Kenneth Buck was also a professional dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, you guys washed your share of dishes. I did mm. in college. I did a hotel restaurant management cooking class. But we had a bakery, and there was cockroaches in the actual uh, case, the glass case where people bought stuff. Where? Uh, Anoka Tech. People went up and they would be like, I'll take that um, donut right there. I worked in that kitchen too my senior yeah. year. And a freaking cockroach would run across it. They're like, never mind. Whoa. Good. Yeah. See, I didn't want to call myself a dishwasher. Sullivan asked a question, guys. Did I you? call myself a Hobart technician because that was the logo on the dishwashing <laughs> unit. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Hobart. Yeah. All right, research question. Holy Y'all shit, Danny. give me a link where I can buy them shoes. Guys, Danny just gave 30 bucks to our dinner. Oh! <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Dinner. Phantom Gord. Yep. That's one. <laughs> oh, speaking of, did you guys see my shining video when I was trying to drive home from the um <laughs> I did. Oh, yeah. I saw Jack Torrance's face come yeah, the okay. wind flying the at the snow. screen. Let's see if it works. Oh, uh, nothing's working tonight. Sorry. People. Oh, you were gonna put the him right in our thing? Yeah, let's see if I could do it. Oh, here ah, it is. There it is. Let's see if it'll work. <laughs> this is last week. <laughs> <laughs> Literally last week. <laughs> That's awesome. Hollywood editing <laughs> happening right here. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> Abom- abominable snowman this from great. Rudolph of R- Imagine Red-Nosed if you guys were high right now. Oh. You'd be freaking out. Okay, let me Disposable <laughs> Euros. Oh, that is one. the best one that yet. That is a good yeah. one. Uh, Disposable Euros. Off of Master of Crumpets. I love it. All right. Detachable Euros. <laughs> King Missile. Mike, I have an idea about my Jackson guitar. It's a JS32. Wow. I don't use the tremolo, so it's a good idea to block it off. Might as yes. well. Yes. Might as well. Shim that bitch up. <laughs> shim shimini, shim shim shiru. I would do it for sure. Yeah, I didn't like locking tremolos. <laughs> That's because you didn't understand. No. It, there's there's an elegance to owning one. You have to be very... Did we ever mess up I, a live song so bad you couldn't finish it? Oh, p- probably. Nope. No, I don't think so. Actually, we just plowed through. No, what I'm we saying We never about, stopped and restarted ever. I one time, think. yeah. One time, that one time in band camp, we were having a show, and I bought my first locking. It was my Charvel Avenger, and I decided to change my strings the night before the show. Huge mistake. I bought the wrong gauge string, and every time I tuned my guitar up, my bridge was like sticking up like ninety degrees. It was so bad. <laughs> so, a bit of advice: never change your strings the night before your first show. It's bad news. Um, Brody, do you guys have any advice for a high schooler in a metal band? Keep going. Stick to it. Yeah. Do the talent show. Get some ladies. Practice a lot. 
Yeah. Practice. Avoid women because they're going to take away your time. People talk about how tight these shows are and how tight the band. You know, someone earlier said, even if you sped up or slowed down, it was still tight. It's because we workshopped. We would shed this stuff every single day after school. <laughs> Excuse me. Five days a week practicing as a full band and then gigs on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, I always tell stories about that summer that we went to Bloods. Every We treated it like a job during summer vacation. It was the year Megadeth Countdown to Extinction came out, I remember. And we would go to Chris's. I'd pick Corey up. For some reason... Um, Throw me in the back of your truck like a fucking sack of potatoes. That's a lie. <laughs> Who's, whose line it is, is it anyway would always be on your TV. I don't know why when I picked you up. But we'd get in my truck. We'd go to Chris's. Al, would you just meet us there? Or would you come with us? I came with. Okay. I didn't so have a car then. I drove the blue bus. But anyway, we would practice every day, and we would raid Chris's fridge. Mm-hmm. I think we owe Chris's parents like $2,000 in food. Yeah. But, but we were determined to be at our best when we opened for the regime. I think that was the reason we were so driven. You think so? I think so. We cause seeing what the bar was. Yeah. It kind of it was realistic to us. Um, How did we go from talent shows and basement parties to the Mirage opening for the regime in one summer? Well, so like that's what I think. Like it's if, crazy. Here's good advice: if you see a band um, play at some place near you, local, mm-hmm. and somebody you like or that inspires you musically, you go see them, and then you think, well, you know, I want to do that. Um, you can. Do you recall the time Dion, Chris's sister, brought us to First Ave to watch Metal Massacre? And it was Power Mad, I think, right? Oh, yeah. They Power were, Mad headline yeah. Coup de Gras. And um, the opening band was Soylent Green, yes. the singer for yes. uh, Acheron. And he jumped off the stage and did like a circle pit. And then we had to leave because we were too young to stay or something. <laughs> it was really weird, but I was super enthused to, to get on that stage. Yeah. Carter Smith wants to know the favorite bass that I own. Like the favorite bass that I own now or the favorite bass back then that I've ever owned ever or back own. then? I would say ever, if I may speak for him. I would say it's your Thunderbird, question. right? I didn't have a Thunderbird back then. It was called an RD Artist. It was a Gibson that I bought at the pawn shop where Al bought his black V. Oh, shit. The one, one of my favorites. Dean had, didn't Dean have to threaten the owner? With, like, didn't he come no, he with traded his scuba bat? gear for scuba, it. Oh, scuba yeah. gear. That's right. <laughs> And a bunch of other things too. It wasn't just scuba gear. It was like <laughs> Dean had many a family sc- dog. No, yes, I'm just the but f- firstborn. <laughs> to to finish off that question, I would say that for the last twenty five years, I've been playing Spectre basses almost exclusively. You should be um, sponsored by. I them love now. I love them. Um, again, I have small hands, and sometimes they have nice small radius necks that are easier for me to play. But I like their five strings. I have, right now, I own four. Got two at the studio and two at home. Hmm. Five string and a four string. So I'm always set. I never have to bring a bass what a down to my rehearsal space. That's a nice feeling. Back in those old days, I'd have, I'd have one <laughs> or maybe two. You had to bring And then to sell everything. them off. I had to sell one to get another. Yeah. So I sold that Gibson, which isn't in this video, is in the, fir- is in the first ad video. At the store that Al worked at, Danny and Cindy's, at the Coon Rapids location, to get my G and L five string that I needed to record all the new material for the Modern Day Crisis album. So some guy walked in there and got a vintage Gibson for a song, and now I. It's a, it's right there. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, Corey, yes. would you agree that a lot of people these days maybe can't relate? to having to sell what they currently have to upgrade to the next instrument. Is that a thing of the past? I think so, just because... Al had to do it too. Mm-hmm. Stuff is kind of cheaper now. I mean, I think you've even done videos about this where, you know, you nowadays a $500 guitar would be like $1,000, not just because of inflation, but I mean, the quality of mid-level guitars yeah, has gone way true. up. 
it's not that the good guitars got better. It's that the sh- crappy guitars became mid-range guitars. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, squares became Apple. Well, and not like, only that, <clears throat> we have the internet. You have like Facebook Marketplace. We didn't have right. that kind of thing back then. It was a pawn shop. eBay. It was, how it far was, um, can you drive? B-shirt. How much gas money do you have to go find yeah. something that's used? <clears throat> where now you can just be like, hey, ship it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's stuff that I had in the early two. I had my first five-string Spectre that I bought in 99. And I had it for I don't know, close to ten years maybe. Yeah, we. And then I sold it on like eBay or something. I don't know why. One of the best spaces I ever had. But I'd, I'd go through times where like ah, I'm I'm quitting. I'm not playing anymore. I'd sell all my gear, and then have to go and so I rebought that one that I sold. It was an orange, uh, Spectre, and I went and rebought it uh, in a different color, <laughs> but that same model from that same time period. I have it back, and that's what I play in my new band now all the time. Okay, we have to answer this question. What's all the effects pedals you guys use? Because I already said mine. The very first pedal I ever bought was a heavy metal pedal, and it was a godsend because my first amp was a PV PA speaker. had no distortion. I literally slashed the speakers with a knife to try to get distortion. Al had a little tiny Squire 15. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Had way better distortion than me. So when I finally got the heavy metal pedal, it was like a miracle. Then I upgraded that to a turbo, and then I bought the chorus pedal, the CE2, and then the EQ, which has been like my boost pedal from back then. So you had, Al, you had my CE2, mm-hmm. and you had like a boss switcher for your crate, I remember. Right, right. What else did you use? That was all. Th- I would always use um, the overdrive built in. And then okay. I changed the crate head to a Marshall valve state. That's right. And... um. Which was like one tube, right? Yeah, it was a tube preamp. I remember that. It was. Yeah. There are actually two of them in there. And yeah, uh, so you went from a really cheap, <laughs> shitty amp yeah, to, to another mid-range. cheap, <laughs> shitty amp that's just slightly better in quality. Yeah, it wasn't much. It, it was, was like hey, it had a, a lateral face. move. It, it said Marshall on it. Okay. It was louder. Yeah. That was the difference. And Corey, Christopher and I were talking about how you always had a good bass tone, even back when you had the the frog what the hell was it called the bullfrog the bullfrog <laughs> well that first amp that i had at lisa's party was the bullfrog and a fender baseman 100 watt you all a, tube you head. had a baseman yes it, that, for 300 bucks i got that cabinet and that head Shh. together from some guy in like brooklyn park wow drove there with my dad and went like, i forgot you had a baseman yep that's what came with silver, that bullfrog silver face yeah. Wow. I have one out there. 70s, probably. Damn, I don't know. Damn. That's crazy. See, Mike, I never cared what the tone sounded like. I just wanted it to be so loud. It didn't matter. <laughs> you just, your dad somehow with scuba gear got you a half stack. <laughs> and I was so happy because before that, we had nothing. Right. I just did a video where a band played Metallica Master Puppets. They had only practice amps on stage. And I was like, that would have been us if we would have No, the had. scuba gear got him the black the v. v. Yeah. Oh, that was okay. The v. Okay. The, How did you get the half stack? That was just out of pocket. Was it like five hundred bucks? That was like a 600 Christmas. Six hundred bucks. Six hundred bucks back then. It's probably like three grand today. Yeah. That's how hard it would be to save up for you that. You think about the inflation. Yeah. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then Chris had the Rogers Black kit, double bass, and then he upgraded slowly to the double bass Tama White kit. I yeah. remember that. But he did it in sections. So yep. first he had like a four piece or a five piece. Then he added the kick drum and he kept going up. I don't there, remember so. that at all. I just remember him having a nine piece kit. Black kit? Yeah. Yeah. No, the white. No, remember the black Rogers the with the with the rack? Yeah, but I just I don't remember him slowly building that. He Tom did. Yeah, yeah, he had he a did. single kick with double bass pedal. Then he like saved up for the rest of it later. So, valve states have killer tone. All our life of agony's first album. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying the tone was bad. It was just I didn't like the clean channel actually. The the overdrive was was better than the crate. But the clean tone was not that <sighs> wonderful. That amp. Sorry. So it's okay. Corey's a working man. I've been up for a long time. You guys, it's six minutes till Easter. Happy Easter. Easter, everyone. Easter. Are right, you guys take some questions? I gotta pee one more time. That means that today's the Sabbath. Should we just wrap it up? No, we got one more quick little thing. But what? You guys keep talking. Mike, Mike's got a special. It's eleven fifty four. You got six minutes. Yeah, we, we gotta go. make yep. it to midnight. Yes, Mike. Okay. Mike's got a special thing he wants to announce. Yes, I'll come back in, in the nude. <laughs> Mike wanted to know what time <laughs> we were gonna special. start this, <laughs> and I posted a <laughs> YouTube clip of Iron Maiden. What? Mike said, "What time do you guys want to do this?" So I posted two. 
minutes oh god to midnight that's a great tune man but dude i'm gonna rock some maiden on the way home actually mike had done something where his last live cast where he did um he was talking about typo negative and i went back and i started listening to it just like kind of brought me back to when oh yeah we would do our shows and and that would be on or pas or whatever before we do the shows or um all that stuff. That's why I can't remember. You, you're like, oh, it was winter of that year. I'm like, I possibly boy. Yeah. Says, why did you guys break up? Good oh, question. There were a lot of things kind of going on, though, at that time. Mike and Al were like the Lennon and McCartney. Right. And that album was sort of our Let It oh, Be. Boy. Yeah, I that's walk into. <laughs> it, it's a deep dive. Of well, possibly wants to know why did you guys break up? Oh, that'll be in our documentary, right? Mainly because Mike's a dink and he went solo. No, no, I think Al tried to date my sister. <laughs> no, just a bunch of weird shit happened. None of that happened. I'm Come just on. kidding. I'm just kidding. It was. Uh, you guys have to realize this is why the documentary would be so cool because we could talk about right. the rise of grunge and alternative music and how our style of music was totally gone by the time we hit our peak right it was just a weird timing well thing. here's the thing i don't think we ever talked to each other about what was going on because now due to this channel and mike having all of his nostalgic flashbacks for 96 and 97 saying it's the most depressing time of his entire life or whatever like I didn't know that was going on. That's true. That's when we broke up. Like, it's the chicken or the egg. Like, do we break up because Mike was depressed or did Mike become depressed because we broke up Mm. and he was working at some shitty job or whatever, (laughs) you know? Delivering the Pioneer Press Mm -hmm. was definitely shitty. But yes, that (laughs) definitely. It was like, I don't know. It was all in one, I don't know, fail swoop. It didn't seem... I don't know. Didn't it seem to happen all at one time? Like everything just kind of collided. After there were a lot of different things going on. There were things going on personal in my life too. That yeah, like even through the changes. recording process of our album, like '96 was just bullshit. Man. So Carter Smith, what is the best concert y'all went to? Metallica I, Black Album. Well, together or separate? I was gonna say in watching these Mirage videos to give people some perspective. About a year before this video, I was in the audience twice in one year watching Pantera on that stage with White Zombie, Zombie, Trouble, and then the next time it was like Crowbar and My Sister's Machine or something. I don't know. Whatever they had, whoever they were playing with. But we acted the way we acted, I believe, in these videos and we were pumped to be on that stage because we were playing on the same stage that our heroes were playing on, mm-hmm. you know, the week after or the week before, yep. you know? I mean, we weren't playing with them directly, which we would have loved to, which... Overkill. If you could find the propane stuff... Yeah. I think the second propane gig was the one we're blaming. I think we played their... <laughs> I think we covered... Do we cover the new propane song before yeah. they played it? Like yeah, at that's their so weird. Show? When I saw a video of that, I'm like, we actually played this tune. The truth hurts. I think it was maybe it was after we played with them, but that was that was like Comstock too. Yeah, where we were playing out in the barn or whatever. That's so crazy. And we did the truth hurts with Blem. Uh, I have video of that somewhere, but just the fact that we got to open for you know propane so crazy we always wanted to open what's up jessica we always wanted to open for overkill we just never quite got there yeah sucked so or testament testament would have been perfect for us typo negative Mm -hmm. and pantera played the mirage yes they did yeah we met typo negative when they were here on the small stage and then Peter didn't we go steal we went to what he did there (laughs) didn't we go to a show mike that was at first avenue typo negative i'm sure i saw him there no, I saw Typo at the Mirage, and then I saw them at OzFest, and that's it. Okay, then I saw them at First Avenue at some point. Yeah, because at the end of the OzFest show, Pete Steele broke every bass string with his thumb. Boom. Boom. So we no, used to that get, was the Mirage show, I thought. He may have done it in both. But do you guys remember we used crazy. to get comp tickets to everything? So yeah. we would get tickets to a lot of these shows, which was cool. Like, I saw Blind Melon. You um, did? Yeah. I saw him... Um, 
Minneapolis was their second to last show before he passed. Yeah, I always tell what? people that story that you, Man. yeah. Al saw one of the very last shows that that Wait, dude did before where was he died. At? First Avenue. Holy. And he was tanked, right? He was just like loaded. <sighs> yeah, messed up. Yeah. Do you guys remember how crazy it was to go see a show at First Ave for a while? Like when you're young, First Avenue seems so, fr- at least to me, it seems so freaky because I never went to Danceateria or any of that stuff. But I kind of went there a lot. Happy Easter. Yeah, I, I went to a lot of Danceateria or the Sunday night <sighs> dance parties. So you guys were used to it. To me, it was like being in a movie. I was like, okay. So I went and saw um, the Psychedelic Furs with Amy Hyde once. And I was like, I'm in a movie. This is like being in the crow right now. It's crazy. I was drinking Summit, having the time of my life. Oh, okay. that was after you were 21? You were still hanging out with Amy Hyde? Yeah, it was weird. Weird times. Weird. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Okay, what's the one more thing we're going to do? Oh, what yeah. We're waiting to do. Um, we're going to do a push up contest. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just wanted to go past 12 o'clock. Okay. Happy Easter, oh, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Any last minute questions? We're going to go. Korea obviously has somewhere to go. No, I don't have anywhere to go. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I even took a. Hour and a half nap earlier today, and I'm still tired. Thank you. I would do anything right now for a freaking omelet or a BLT. Well, too bad your this other Perkins is closing. Son of a. I've got what some. What if I found us a late night place? Would we go there right now? <laughs> Maybe, but the one place I always go to closed, uh, or they don't do the late night anymore. I've got some leftovers from dinner. dinner. <laughs> That's dinner. okay. Yeah, you. Yeah, we all we all went there. I know they don't do late night anymore. No, they couldn't make it work. I was keeping it open. I think just by going there every night, I would play virtual ping pong with somebody in China, and then I'd get done. I'd be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go get an omelet at four in the morning." Well, we went there after your show. Yeah. It was really good. I have a question about the fail to be riff right after the fade and intro. When oh, did, did, did you scroll did. back up, Mike? What was the question? Did They're it, asking about fail did. to be. Oh, when you do the gallop into the power chord, do you mm-hmm. bend mm-hmm. the power chord or do you play the power chord twice? Oh, um, it's did, 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 did that part. Yeah, it's it's not a power chord. It's the oh, yeah, it's it's a one, two, two, so it's just a I'll yeah. do it on the acoustic, <laughs> yes. It's just um, basically three power chords, two are the same note, one is the D. So, and, wait, and the after the e. intro, it's like the that part. I thought he was talking about that, yeah, 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 Fade and intro. I no, that's that after this. There's no bend. Sounds like some kind of weird Spanish song. Right <laughs> <laughs> I like it on the acoustic. Unplug. Fail to plug. That'd be cool if we did. You know a bend. that song? What's that? You know that song? What one? Oh, I was doing a country song. Oh, well, play it again. I probably do. It's a honky tonk, but no. donk a donk. <laughs> Might as well be. Might as well be that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I almost said rest in peace, Toby Keith, but I don't think that was him. Or was it? Mm. Ugh, you guys ever seen Dillinger 4? They just played locally. Can I use a tube screamer for a boost, or do I need <coughs> to use a pedal that you used to You know boost? what? A tube screamer is great, but it does get saturated sounding, so it kind of dips in the more you crank it. So I... I don't know. I like EQ pedals or even a micro amp from MXR is a good way to go. That's what I do now. So, Mike, do you know my buddy uh, Kirk? I think so. Kirk Humbert. He wor- used to work at Mr. Mark's for like 25 years. Now he's at uh, Willie's American Guitars. Willie's. That he does familiar. the videos for Willie's, and he told me oh. he did a video about the tube screener, mm-hmm. and the guy from Ibanez or whoever that actually developed the tube screener, like, liked his video oh, shit. That'd be and crazy. i told him like dude this is just like mike 
having Bruce Kulick on and all these other guys. <sighs> so crazy. He's going to uh, be on my guy next from video. Heart. Yeah. He's like, dude, it was crazy. He made this video about the Tube Screamer, and the guy that invented the Tube <laughs> Screamer commented. I'm like, I know. This is like... Every time I do a what's video, happening I get worried about that. I'm like, oh, my God. So Bruce is going to do an upcoming video with me. We're going to do like eight different guitar YouTubers. We're all going to do one-minute videos of our favorite licks. Oh, so cool. keep an eye out for that. Where you just play them? Uh, play them and then teach it a little bit. But Bruce went two minutes long, so I'm going to have to cut him out of the video. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Pat Stucker, Twilight Zone by Cole Nearing. Uh, oh, remember yeah, when Corey's dad yeah. was like, Corey can play that. We're like, <laughs> no, I was like, this is my favorite <laughs> thing to play. <laughs> do, 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 do. Pat Stucker, Sher- oh, Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> they know how to get me riled up to do push ups. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Although I just saw a recent picture of her with like her foot and it looked like a demon foot. It was really weird. <laughs> Mike, what's the best A7X song? Um, I'd say anything off of the first three songs of their self-titled album. Afterlife, maybe. I saw them live and I brought Is my... that the hail to the king? No, that's later. But if you ever heard their original uh, self-titled album, it's incredible. Afterlife's on there. Yep. So many Let's great see songs. original yeah, self-titled album. Back I when they saw were hardcore. I saw it's him just, on that tour. Yeah, it's just the picture of that bat with a skull, the overkill skull. Oh, yeah. And it's the best album ever by them. My cousin Brian and I went to see him in Mankato. It was, I it saw was that tour, too, with my German friend. And she's like, can I, sit, can I sit on your shoulder? And I'm like picking her up. I'm do like, you remember when they did Walk? <sighs> yeah. Oh, God. They could do no wrong back then. Nate that wants to know when the Unclear demo will be uploaded. Uh mm. Never. It'll always. I burned it. I had that's one. The thing, that's the one with something more on it, right? Yeah, I have it out there actually with the original. Um, Do you weird. not like that one? No, that one was okay. It's just it. It led us into deep waters. Let's just say that. Think so. Kristen Stewart. Um, I just saw a picture of her. She's looking a little ratty. I don't know. Boys, we're playing a bar gig in Minnesota. I need to add some more crowd, please. There's any suggestions? <laughs> We gotta add some. How about a losers. replacements cover, like rocked up? What do you think? Replacements metal? That'd be sweet. Sure. That would be cool. <laughs> I remember one version of the last cover band I was doing. We did uh, one of those Goo Goo Dolls songs, but like the one of the rocking Slide. songs. Slide. No, it was like. Black Balloon. Long Way Down. Long oh, yeah. Way. That's a good song, actually. Yeah, there's some good tunes, man. Simple, catchy. It's funny because it's hard to rip on any bands because they all have something good right. to offer, you know? Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's a hook, right? A hook's a hook. Yeah. The like crazy Black. thing is those guys started on Metal Blade Records as a punk band. I saw them live, and their bass player sang a couple tunes. He's like, yep. yeah, I used to be the singer of this band. Yep. And he sang, and he sounded really strange. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you guys would have never made it. He's got a weird, nasally commercial. punk rock voice. Yeah, until Resnick took over. It was just yeah. like a weird, twisted band. You know, Resnick was just the you know, consummate front man. So. That happened to my friends in Down Above, too. Back in those Hook Echo days, they had gotten a producer they were getting shopped and when the the producer worked with them you know they they all sang three-part harmonies and the two lead the bass and the guitar player they switched off songs because they each wrote their own songs when they went to that producer in new york they're like nope he's a lead singer yeah you need to stop singing you're the bass player they just know but look they just went you got to be the focal point well look (laughs) at some of the groups like nine inch nails they were like dance music and then you know yeah, it's just because you start out one way. Once yeah. you transform and all of a sudden take off, you, I mean, something had to happen. <laughs> Pepperoni says, you got to cut the stream. It's 7 a.m. for me. <laughs> Where do you live? Ooh. Dubai? Yeah. No, Are Ireland? you halfway around the world? You're seven hours ahead of us? No, that'd be like Nova <laughs> Scotia. <laughs> no. Seven hours ahead would be UK or farther. Yeah, oh. it's probably yeah. Hannah country. UK is six hours ahead. <laughs> um, Nathan Swap. Do you know that? guy he says the best <laughs> google doll song is we are the normal I, co-written by paul westerberg i thought he wrote we are the world no that'd be michael jackson <laughs> oh, sorry no that would be um what's his name who wrote that actually who produced michael jackson quincy jones quincy jones there's a musical for michael was jackson lionel richie you know. is there yeah broadway 
Oh, what's it called? I, I would tell people um, if you haven't seen it. I don't it, know. It's coming here soon. Daddy. Watch that. We are the world documentary. I did. Monica Bellucci. It was amazing. I think all you need to see from that is Michael Jackson nailing it and Huey Lewis in the new or Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper just blowing it. They're like, okay. Well, they eventually nailed it. No, the best part. No, they they sent Michael Jackson away. They're like, okay, we're just gonna keep your part, go home. These guys are gonna take like twenty minutes to get this down. But the best part was Stevie Wonder showing Bob Dylan how to sing like Bob Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best part. Bob Dylan was like, is it? Wait, start it again. Then he goes, hey, Stevie, let's go over to the piano. Yeah. And they great. said Stevie was a mimic. And he showed Bob Dylan the best Bob Dylan way to do it. And he just copied Stevie Wonder and did it in one take. And they went, that's a wrap on Bob Dylan. Good night, Bob Dylan. Well, he wanted to get out of there anyway. Did you see his face? He's like, oh, yeah. Swing, and he looks like he wanted to murder well, someone. Well, when the, they were doing the chorus is first. We are the world. That's when he's not singing. <laughs> he's just when Eddie, weirdly moving his mouth. When Eddie Murphy did the Buckwheat <laughs> on Saturday Night Live with oh, Bob yeah. Dylan. Yeah. And they just put we are the question world. marks up there. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's Bob Dylan. Blech. Looks like you got Blech. Puck Blech. in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Springsteen was gargling gravel, of course. Did you guys well, see Springsteen that? Springsteen said, I had just finished the Born in the USA <laughs> tour like the day before, and they flew me out to LA. <laughs> You, you're going to do this. It was tough. I was, I was in rough shape. Anytime someone gives Springsteen crap, I'm like, first of all, listen to his old stuff. Second of all, you think Born in the USA is really like a patriotic song? Listen to those lyrics. There was a politician who thought that, and they used <coughs> it as their campaign. Like, Yeah, exactly. Duh. Who did that? Some guy was like, oh, it's actually talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> it says those funny clips of Michael's face of disappointment watching the others track their part. Because he would just do it over and over again perfectly, and all of a sudden it's like, here comes Huey Lewis, you know. <laughs> but they had multi-tracking back then. I don't know why they didn't just do that right away, you know. So, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson wrote We Are the World. It makes sense. Lionel Richie had his hands in a lot of things. I didn't realize well, Lionel Richie was part of that. Oh, he was the main, like, producer, I believe. It was... Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson started it, and then Lionel Richie and Michael were kind of like Wait. bouncing it back and forth. Are you sure Quincy had anything to do with this? Because I'm wondering yeah, now. He's if it was the producer. It might have been Lionel Richie though, but I'm not sure. Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson, like they, they, they were inseparable. They did the imp, they whatever the DNA of it. Yeah, and that's when Lionel Richie started hanging. Like I went over to Michael's house and like. I don't believe anything anymore that I hear about the past. Coley thought the whole thing looked like it was AI. She's like, is this <laughs> is this even real? Yeah. This doesn't even look like it's actually real. I think it was real. I just don't think we always thought our intentions were good, but back then, who knows, you know? Steve Wonder forgot to write it. Turned up late. I like the fact that they tried to use <clears throat> Sheila E to get Prince to come in. Yeah, I heard the whole story about Prince. Yeah. Like, he didn't show up, and then the next day He's he like, felt bad. I'll come and play a guitar <laughs> solo. They're like, no, dude, that's not what's going on here. He felt bad because he's like, I didn't go, so he, like, donated a whole bunch of money to it. I'm like, uh, I can understand that. Yeah, without Quincy, Michael Jackson wouldn't be who he is. But I just, I never realized that they recorded that when they did because everybody was in town for the American, Amus yeah. Amer American Music Awards. They're like... Okay, as soon as the award show is over, jump in your limo and go to the studio. And we're all going to do it. Yeah. And it took them all night. And they had to take a dinner break. And Kenny Rogers is like eating cheeseburgers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, it's late. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know. I really liked it because it was a good kind of behind the scenes of seeing these people. Yeah. Who would never be in the same room, True. like interact, you know. Plus, when you watch it, you go, "Oh, I forgot he was in that. Oh, I forgot yeah. she was in that." You know, so it's yeah. pretty. Dan cool. Aykroyd was there. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> that is so strange. Yeah. Kari Werher. Oh, Pat Stucker knows how to get to my heart. Do you guys remember her? Yes. Remote control. What are your thoughts on Lars Ulrich and his hair? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. He doesn't have any. <laughs> That's why Pepperoni says he always has his cap on. Yes. Oh. Hey, when you play those crazy beats for the, that many years, I mean, you're going to lose a couple. That's right. Kenny did later have <laughs> a chain of roasted chicken places. Who else was in We Are the World that I can't remember? Was Kate Bush in there? <laughs> was she twirling around in the background? <laughs> the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> really? Yeah. How about uh, the what Miami about Vice guy? <laughs> Twisted Sister. 
Don oh, yeah. Johnson. <laughs> no, I think Oates was there. Well, you need. <laughs> No, it wasn't Oates. It was just Daryl Hall. Okay, I thought it was Oates. No, in the I other think room. they were. Maybe they were both there. But Daryl Hall got to sing a what air? Sing a verse or whatever. Okay, we should uh, do a deep dive on "We Are the World" for the next <laughs> podcast. We I could go bird. on this for an hour. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, didn't you do a funny thing of that, Mike? I thought I did, but now I don't think I did. Yeah, you did. You did it on your live. Cast. Okay, you I may have. Yeah, boo boo. Did I boo <laughs> did, yeah. did I green screen myself? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I think so. Cindy Lauper, Kim Carnes, right? It was oh, Huey Lewis, Cindy Lauper, and Kim Kim Carnes harmonized and sang that last that's part. Right, and that's why Huey Lewis was had, like. Oh. They told me to come up with a harmony on the spot, and I'm five feet away from Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, <laughs> Willie Nelson, Kenny Rock, like all Bob the best Dylan. singers. Yeah. And he's like, he didn't have a range. He's like, I have one range. I can't go high. Yeah. He wanted to go back in time right about then. Cindy Lauper Karn. killed it on that. That thing that she did is like, oh, wah, 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 wah. She, every, did you watch that where every take she did, she has yeah. the energy and the spirit. And then Kim Cards is like, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> Just like <laughs> with her scratchy voice. You know? yeah. All right, you guys. Um, <laughs> any last minute questions? Phil, Phil Collins, Collins, was he there? Huh? Did he do the drums? Choo-choo, 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 yeah. choo-choo. We are the world. <laughs> My favorite is <laughs> the people that have the videos where they're like closing their cabinets. Uh, I just saw oh, one of the other right. guys like, choo-choo, choo-choo, choo-choo. <laughs> <laughs> Slamming his cabinets to the drum beat. Did you see that one drummer who put drums all the way down his hallway? <laughs> he just kept repeating it. Choo-choo, choo-choo. Hey, yeah. As he ran yes. down the hallway. Yes, yes I saw that. I wanted to do the file cabinets. I wanted to do um, the... Europe, the final countdown. I want to call it the filing cabinet. <laughs> the <laughs> filing <laughs> countdown. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just open the drawer back. That could work. What about um, Devil Went Down to Georgia with a McDonald's straw? <laughs> Never mind. I have big dreams that you guys can't understand. You can have those girls. We got different tastes. Those girl, what? Okay, okay guys, give me some girls and I'll do some you push-ups. Like anthrax? Yes, we like. We grew up in anthrax. Yeah, we grew up on the thrax. Uh, killer. Uh, what was it? Attack of the Killer Bees was a big distraction during band practice. Did you hear what's happening with Anthrax? Yes. Um, they're bringing back their original bass player from forty years ago is coming back <gasps> because the guy from SOD. Yeah. No way. Yes, He's... Danny Lilker. Oh? Lilker, because I thought it was Linkletter. Frank Bello has, has some personal things going on in his family, and no. he he can't tour. But wait, there's a bunch of switch arounds going on right now. So Charlie Bonate's in Pantera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think the singer, he's still around, right? Or are they getting John Bush back? No, it it'll be it'll be No, John Bush it'll wants be to the, get back to Armored Saint. No, That's it's right. the first time ever that the OG lineup of Anthrax has played together in 40 oh, years. Spreading the disease era? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. I will go see that. Uh-oh, Jessica wants to see push-ups. Who wants to do push-ups with me? Someone said Nancy Wilson. <laughs> Nancy Wilson. Okay, Samantha Fox. You guys need. You got me there. You guys, n- Al. Do you remember your brother had a Samantha Fox Push poster? Up to yes, Margaret I do. I may or may not have pleasured myself to that poster. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, you guys, Nate, give us a number. What? How many push-ups? I mean, like army push-ups. Uh, they could be cheater push-ups. It's okay. <laughs> to quote Stripes, <laughs> how many push-ups do you think you can do? I don't want to. I mean, do, I don't know. Like, I don't want to do push ups too late in the night. That's the no, third no, stripes uh, reference of the day. I'm serious. That's so weird. Kathy Ireland. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I went to a therapist. I uh, told me I uh, swallowed a lot of aggression <laughs> along with a lot of pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> the dude, $2. Thank you. If you guys want to give any last minute super chats, we're going to use them to go to Manny's and get a steak for Scott. Scott. It was so it was so cool the first Why time. Why does he, Scott get his own show? What's happening with Scott? <sighs> he's gonna do an interview. Is with it gonna me be tomorrow. about Snafu? No, he's just gonna do Minneapolis was, type stuff. Was it five push ups on the top of the mini I see twenty five tower? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. If someone super chats me a hundred bucks. <laughs> no, here's the thing. The time we I'll went do to Manny's, five whole <laughs> army push ups. <laughs> the time we went to Manny's, it was Scott's first time eating lobster and it was like watching a virgin get laid for the first time. <laughs> We're all watching he's like, him. We're what so, is this? So proud of sorcery. Him. Yeah, he's like dipping it in the butter. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> is this gonna kill me? I thought it was, I thought his head was gonna swell. It was really scary. Okay, sixty nine twenty four. Corey, are you gonna do some push ups? Hold on, hold on. Don't do them yet. We gotta do them like collectively. 
So whatever number you give us, we all have to do a third of it. Who's in the best shape? You guys want to do like a third of them? Three. <laughs> Al's going to do three. Corey, can you do ten? No way. L, ten? I could do five. I can do ten. How about, this is like dimes across America. What was that called? Where you, merch of dimes. This is going to be push-ups of dimes. Ten dollars from Brooks. Hands across America. This will be push-ups. Whoops. No. <laughs> push-ups for pennies. <laughs> It'd probably be more beneficial if I, I did set up. <laughs> okay, Corey's going to do dumbbell curls. I could do 100 dumbbell curls. No, don't say 100. How about that? Dude, you're not doing 125s. That's 25s. So what? Corey will do 20, 25. I can curl a 60-pound bar. I think I can do. No, don't. I'm telling you, you're going to get to 20 and you're going to hate, hate yourself for saying that. Okay. Okay. See what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Corey's going to do dumbbell curl. Dumbbell <laughs> curls. Dumbbell. Hold on, Corey. Stop. We got we to gotta time it. Three. You're going to do how many? Four, Four. you dumbbell. <laughs> Six. He said 20. Seven. Eight. Come on, Al. Nine. Nine. Ten and a ten. one. Ten. That's it. Okay, ten's good. The other arm now. Ten. He works hard for the money. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So hard for you, honey. Three. Boom, boom, That's all I got. Boom, boom. <laughs> Three. All right, Corey, do thirteen. <laughs> all right, Al, you gonna do some curls or you gonna do push-ups? I'll do push-ups. Curls are fine. What? Curls are fine. I'll do curls. All right, how many? I don't know. What do you want? Let me do my five push-ups and then I'm gonna go. All right, Corey's gonna do push-ups. Five. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a strong, I'm strong. <coughs> Should we give him some uh, some musical support? Yeah, hold yeah, on, hold yeah. on. Corey, what music do you want? Are you the tiger? Yeah. Uh, uh, I need with to fire. slam a fire. All right, he wants to fight fire with fire. Acoustic, just like uh, you guys, American movie. You guys count. One, <laughs> two, three, four. Oh, he did one. God no, he did a half. Like a Corey, your crack is showing. <laughs> How about if we do battery? Push-ups. Come on, Corey. Zero. You, do, you can do one more. fall down. I'm gonna do it in curls. I'm not doing push-ups. Come on, Corey. What are you gonna do? Oh, he's gonna lift his phone. Okay, Al, your turn to do curls. How many are you gonna do? I gotta get up early in the morning and make potatoes. See you, Corey. Alright. Everyone say bye to Corey. Good to see you, my man. I'm taking him out for steak. So don't worry. I will come visit the restaurant soon. I almost thought I saw your parents the other day, but it was not I'll be bad. there. I'll be there very soon. Just want to surprise you. Okay, we're going to end this with... Guy. What are we doing? Al's going to do either push-ups or curls or um, cock push-ups. Bye, Corey. <laughs> and I'm going to see what, if I can do <laughs> one more than whatever he does. <laughs> whatever you do, Al, I have to do one more is my challenge. Okay, we just want me to do like 10 curls. Anything you want to do. do grab, a, grab a weight. Where is it? And I'll do a shake weight. Where, where, it's over there. Where do you keep them? Over there. You guys ever see shake weight? I can do that all night, baby. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. We got to count. Nobody follows rules. You can tell we're all Gen X. Okay, ready? This is for Danny. Should I sit? Uh, sure. So I'm like on the screen? Yeah, I wish you should had a I headband make right now. funny faces while I do it? Yeah. Ready? I think we should do Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Okay. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three, four. <gasps> two. Three. You count, Al. I'm not counting. Three, four, seven, eight, five, fight. Holy shit, dude. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, Twenty.
20 with each arm. Holy shite. I'm getting better shape as I get older. Bro, you got that old man strength. Let's see, I think I could do 10 each arm. All right, I got to play the music for you. Yes, though. do it. What do you want to hear, Mike? Um, how about Pac LaBelle's Canon in D <laughs> no. sharp minor, that... 7, flat 5. Used to the shake weight. Okay, a little nuge. Nuge will be fine. One, two. This is so homoerotic. Three, four, six. This is like a bad 80s movie. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. What have we become? 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. Okay, I did half of it so far. I need Nancy Wilson's shoe to it. inspire me. I need some purple haze. Come on, skinny Korean I arms. Remember this song. Purple Haze? Yeah. What's the chord? No, that was right. E7 sharp 9. Then it goes G. Just wrap your thumb over the top. That'll work too. Or you could do what you did earlier. Do what you just did with the. No, do the uh, diagonal shape you did. And just wrap your thumb over the top. Which one? So go back to the chord you did earlier. No, not that one. The earlier one that was. Yep. Now just wrap your thumb over the top for the G. Oh. Yeah. You do that? Yeah, that's Hendrix. Yeah. Oh, and then I, move that up two frets. My thumb's too fat. You got it. Seriously? Yeah. And then move that up two frets. Yeah. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Why is that still so wrong? Because you're not quite nailing the root note. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We're gonna do a dual guitar part to end this. Don't let me touch that. <laughs> yeah, you don't touch anything. I don't get to play with the toys. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs>
Man, I love jamming with you. <laughs> that was fun. That's, that's like old school. Up, that's mm-hmm. how we came up with average. Mm-hmm. All right. Good stuff. Uh, I, do I get a sit back towards the microphone feels like sex it was kind of awkward afterwards <laughs> it's like what do we do now do i have to look at you no. like, do we just do that <laughs> do i have to smile at you now no <laughs> why don't you just go home so that's Can i why just I, go home <laughs> i'm just gonna look away and walk out the door <laughs> awkward awkward yeah. moment bye <laughs> that was strange but lovely <sighs> I'll think fondly of it like two days from now, but right now you just gotta leave. My Venmo is not <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. We will see you soon. I don't know how that sounded because it was all <laughs> whatever. It was fun. Yeah, it was great. Peace out, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Love you guys. Uh, we'll see you at the next video or live stream, and uh, catch you later. Bye, Chris. Hope you're having fun at Wally World. <laughs>